What do you think would be the right thing to do? Fine, I guess I'll be friends with the frog. I never thought I would say something like that out loud. Give me a hug, new best friend. Ah! Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is story time. Today, we're reading The Princess and the Frog. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. That time, there was a king and queen. There they are right now. Hello. Hello. They were really good at their job. They took care of their people. They listened to the people of their kingdom. Sure, I agree that every Friday shall be Pizza Friday. Yay! Pizza! Pizza! They made the tough decisions. Hmm, should everyone in the kingdom have off from work for trampoline day? Well, it does sound like fun for everyone. Okay, I declare tomorrow everyone has the day off. Jump away! Yay! And most importantly, they were kind. No, no, I insist. After you. Oh my, thank you, your majesty. So it's no surprise that they were also really great parents. And their daughters, AKA princesses, were also pretty awesome. The youngest daughter named Tanya was really special. Some might even say enchanting. In fact, the sun even marveled when it shone on her face. Oh my, you're marvelous. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> Aw, that is so nice. Princess Tanya was not just into jewels, fancy dresses, and tea parties, <laughs> although those things were all pretty cool too. Yeah, I have lots of hopes and dreams, and I really love, love, love soccer, or some might say football. Who am I kidding? I don't play soccer in this dress. That's better. Princess Tanya was really good at soccer. She played on her kingdom's team. They were the golden warriors and they won a lot of games and sometimes lost, but always had fun. One day at her game. Okay guys, this is for the championship. You can do it. Work together. Go, Go golden warriors. warriors. Come on princess, this is your chance. For the winning goal, you can do it. No! I really need to work on my skills. So that's what she did. I practiced day in and day out. Of course, as long as I finish my chores. Yeah, princesses do chores too. <laughs> I practiced my kicking. I practiced my blocking. I practiced my dramatic falling on the ground pretending I'm injured. I practiced my victory dancing. I practiced until I was so tired. Wow, this is so fun. Make sure you rest and then keep practicing. You know what they say, practice makes. Perfect, I know, practice makes perfect. No, I was going to say practice makes you a hard worker. It's not about being perfect. It's important to work hard when you're going for your dreams. Thanks, Mom. You're so wise. <laughs> well, I mean, I used to be quite the athlete in my day. Four? Yeah, Mom, you've told us just a few times how good you were. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go play some more. See ya. Princess Tanya went for a walk through the forest near the castle. She had her special golden ball with her. Mom said I should rest, and my most favorite place to chill out is by the linden tree. There's this relaxing well. Sometimes I even make wishes on the well. Hey, Princess Tanya, what's up? Seen any rainbows recently? No, actually, I haven't. I've been kind of busy. <laughs> Here, cat. Oops, sorry. The whole no legs thingy makes playing soccer tricky. That's okay. You're good at a lot of other things. Aw, oh, shucks. And you are really good at lots of stuff too, princess. Like, obviously, you're a soccer star. I'm doing my best. Watch this. Uh-oh, it's about to fall in. No, no! Oh, no. Oh, the man. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, my golden ball. Princess Tanya lost her golden ball in the well. Uh... <laughs> the son tried his best to help. Hey, princess, here you go. Have some me shine. Get it? Me shine instead of sunshine? 
It's no use, Mr. Sun. My ball is gone forever. Well, maybe not forever. Cheer up. How can I cheer up when my most favorite thing in all the land is gone, lost, vanished? <laughs> this is very sad. Maybe a little dramatic, but... <laughs> Who? Me? Dramatic? <gasps> what? Sorry. Forget I said anything. I'm just gonna go home. Ooh, interesting. Let's read another story. Come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Princess Tanya had gone back to the castle with no ball in hand. That afternoon, when it was tea time, Princess Tanya was sitting with her sisters and her mom. She was not her usual happy self. They could see something was wrong. Princess Tanya, why the long face? Yeah, you're eating your favorite chocolate biscuits. You should be so happy. But I'm not happy. I'm way upset, you guys. Uh, yeah, they can tell. What gives? I lost my most favorite golden ball. It fell in the well when I was practicing. And now what will I do? And how will I get serious skills if I don't have it? And it was my good luck charm. And I feel like I've lost a part of my soul. And I can't stop crying in the middle of everything. Even when I do my chores, it's like, here I am sweeping, but I'm so sad. Sweep, sweep. Wah! That's so sad. And, and, sweet daughter, take a deep breath. <sighs> Sorry. Now, why don't you go back to the well and see if you can get it back? Okay, I'll try. So the princess went back to the well by the linden tree. And of course, when she got there, no ball was in sight. She started crying again. Why? Why? Uh-oh, here we go again. I'm sorry, Mr. Sun. And I'm sorry I was so rude to you yesterday. I just feel so sad. I get it. <laughs> Why are you crying? Mr. Sun, I just told you. That wasn't me. Huh? Then whose voice was that? Hello? It's me. Ah! You're, you're, you're talking and you're a frog. You're a talking frog. Uh, I mean, you were just talking to the sun, so... Right. True. <clears throat> Anyways... So why are you so sad? I could hear your cries from miles away. Well, yesterday my most favorite golden soccer ball fell into the well when I was trying to show the sun some really cool tricks. Hmm. That does sound like a problem. It is. And now I don't know what to do. <laughs> hmm. I bet I could help. That's sweet, but I don't really know how a tiny talking frog is gonna be able to get me a new golden ball. Oh, I mean, I could go fetch your ball for you. Really? Yeah, I'm a really good swimmer. And you look like you're a good person. Who needs a helping hand? Poor flipper. What, what would you call this? Um, I'm not sure. So, are you gonna get my ball or not? Absolutely. Great, thanks. Wow, that is so cool. Okay, but what do I get in return? There's always a catch. So? Well, that is like my most favorite thing of all the things I have. So you can have my clothes, my pearls, my precious stones, even my golden crown. Thanks, but I don't need all that fancy stuff. Well, then what can I offer you? Friendship. I don't have any friends. Huh? You know, this royal forest, this wishing well, these woods, they all get pretty lonely. I'd love to have a new friend. We could do lots of cool stuff together. Um... If you say yes, I'll jump in and get your ball right now. Well... I'm not quite sure what kind of companionship a frog can offer. They're kind of slimy. And don't they usually live in water? But I'm really desperate here. So... Okay, you got yourself a deal. Deal. Ew. I mean, thanks. Princess Tanya watched as the frog took a running start and leapt into the well. And she waited, and waited, and waited. Then suddenly, the frog emerged to the surface of the water with a loud gasp of air. Got it. Oh, I'm your hero. Um, that is not my ball. My ball is golden colored and beautiful and so special to me. Are you sure? You don't want to take a closer look? Maybe it's yours, but just got dirty. Ah! Ew! OMG, what was that? Sorry. 
Oh, just a fish. Well, thank you so much for trying, Mr. Frog. I guess it's no use. My ball's gone forever. I guess I'll just move out of the castle and change my name and go start a little surf shop on the beach. Um, that sounds like a slight overreaction. Oh, maybe I am overreacting, but what am I gonna do? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Princess Tanya was sure she would never see her ball ever again. Wow, it's gone forever. I'll never get it back. Hey, don't cry. If you start crying, then I'm gonna start crying, and then... Let me try one more time, beautiful princess. If I can find it, you'll be my friend, right? Yeah, sure, whatever, thank you. The frog dove down to the bottom of the well again to find the ball. Aha, you said golden soccer ball, yeah? I also see a golden football, a golden baseball, a golden hockey puck. Do you want those too? Oh, just the soccer ball is fine, thanks. You sure? So many cool things down here. Just the ball, thank you. Suddenly, there it was. That is amazing. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm so happy I can kiss, um, give you a nice nod of thanks. <laughs> See ya, frog dude. Where are you going? You promised we'd be friends. You gave me a high five. But Princess Tanya was so excited, she forgot about her deal with the frog. She dribbled it all the way home. Wait for me. You're running too fast. I can't keep up. Oh man, I should start working out. Yay, my ball! Princess! The frog chased after Princess Tanya, but soon she was out of sight. Still, the frog wasn't gonna give up. All he wanted was to be her friend. Seriously, that's the thanks I get. Better start heading towards the castle. This might take a while. Meanwhile, Princess Tanya had already made it back to the castle. And she shoots, she scores! Tanya, dear, please don't kick your soccer ball at the house. Oh, sorry, Mom. <laughs> I'll just practice my footwork. That night, Princess Tanya peacefully went to sleep, and she dreamt of the most magical things. Wow, this is so fun. And there she goes, ladies and gentlemen. She's off. She's faster than a rocket ship. I'm going to make the winning goal. She's doing it, folks. She's really doing it. Watch out. Here I... Huh? Hi. Wait a minute. Princess Tanya woke up from her dream a little confused, but in a split second, she was fine again. She had her ball and it was all good. She was so glad she could sing. Tra la 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 la. I don't know the words to this song. It's a good day to be alive <laughs> and maybe do some art projects and of course, play soccer. Oops, I don't wanna be late for breakfast. The king, queen, and princess were all eating a big, wonderful breakfast. Fruit salad, sparkling cider, French toast with strawberries, sprinkles, and whipped cream. Princess Tanya's favorite. Mmm, this is so yummy. I agree. La 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 la. I love sprinkles and whipped cream and all these yummy things. Tra la 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 la. <laughs> you seem happy today. I got my golden soccer ball back. Now I can practice forever and ever. Congratulations! How'd you get it back? Um, well, you see, I am, um, I don't remember, I think. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. I'll get it! Princess Tanya excitedly ran to the door as fast as she could. As she opened the door, she looked around but couldn't see anybody. When she looked down. Hi, best friend. It was the frog. Princess Tanya screamed and slammed the door shut. What is it, Dia? N nothing. Let me see. She's right. There's nothing there. Ew, gross. What's all the commotion? What's out there? Is it a giant? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So the frog was outside the door. All the princesses had shrieked about seeing him at their house. But the king wanted to know what was going on. What's all the screaming? It's so early in the morning. I haven't even finished my coffee for all this excitement. There's
there's a, a thing outside. If it's not a giant, then is it a monster? OMG, no, Dad. It's a frog. A giant frog? Oh, no, Dad. It's just a regular-sized frog. You really do need to drink some coffee. Oh, that's a relief. I met a giant frog once. He was very rude. No table manners at all. He did keep the flies away, though. More ice cream sundaes. You didn't even say please. Please give me ice cream sundaes. That's not much better. I don't like your tone. Mm, never mind, I'm full. Ugh, so rude. Oh, that's so not cool. Well, anyways, Tanya, what does the frog want from you? Well, it's an interesting story. Do you remember when I lost my favorite golden ball? Of course we remember. That happened literally yesterday. I asked you about it like a minute ago. So when I went to the well, that frog offered to help me get my ball back. And he did. But I also made a promise. <gasps> a promise? To a frog that talks? My queen, a talking frog is the least of our worries now. Our daughter made a promise. Yeah, and I promised him that we could be friends, but I'm not sure how I feel about that now. What do you mean? Well, he's a frog. We're so different. What would we even do together? I can't have afternoon tea with him or play soccer or bake cookies. He doesn't even have hands or feet, just like these web thingies. Outside the door, the frog wondered if saying something more poetic might get the royal family to open the door. Youngest daughter of the king, open up the door for me. Don't you know what yesterday you said to me down by the well? Youngest daughter of the king, open up the door for me. Hello. I tried to rhyme. I thought it was sublime. Oh, there I go again. I didn't even mean to. Now I'm feeling blue. Ah, I can't stop. <laughs> that was so funny. Wow, that frog is quite poetic. How can you deny such a well-spoken creature? Your mother is right, my dear daughter. You made a promise, and we are a family of promise keepers. I honestly didn't think that a frog could live outside the water. Of course they can. Frogs are amphibians. You should have paid more attention in school. I mean, it must have taken him ages to get here. He is pretty tiny. Maybe it's because your friendship really matters to him. Hmm, I just never saw myself being much of a frog person. <laughs> you must respect all living creatures in our kingdom. This frog did something very kind for you from the bottom of his little froggy heart. And in this royal kingdom, being kind is very important. Plus, I'm sure that the frog hops very high. He'd be a great buddy on trampoline day. That's true. You know we like you to make good choices, so it's up to you. What do you think would be the right thing to do? Fine, I guess I'll be friends with the frog. I never thought I would say something like that out loud. Give me a hug, new best friend. Ah! Whoa, a talking frog. OMG, I love it. Oh, please, sister. You talk to your pet rabbit all the time. What? How did you know that? Um, your pet rabbit talks to us too. She told us you snore really loud and drool in your sleep. Do not. Do too. Mom. Um, hello. Can I get a hand here? Oh, sorry, Tanya. Um, come here, little frog. Why don't you give Tanya a little space? Excuse me. I may look little, but I'm not a baby. I'm 30 years old. 30? Whoa, you're basically a grown-up. Yeah, a real grown-up. Like, I used to have a job doing royal... Wait, never mind. Forget I said anything. Doing what? What, what were you going to say? Um, nothing. Never mind. We are brand new friends. We don't need to be spelling out secrets right away, right? Huh? Okay, weird. Hey, do you think there's something fishy with that frog? Fishy? I thought he was a frog. Now I'm all confused. No, ugh. Fishy, like hiding something? Like he said he had a job before. I didn't know frogs could work. I mean, there's no possible way he's like something other than a frog, right? Like a disguise. <laughs> nah. nah. Oh no, let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The princesses had been discussing their impression of their new friend. 
Maybe there is something more to this frog guy than meets the eye. Ooh, like something magical? You know I love magic. Ahem, dear daughters, young friend, would you care to join us at the table? Wait, if this is your dad and you're a princess, then that means he's the king. Cool, good day, your highness. It's so nice to meet you. Let's eat. Mr. Frog, we can pull up a chair for you. Or a lily pad, or a chair made out of lily pads. I'm sure we have one lying around somewhere. Yeah, we make furniture out of leaves all the time. We made a lava lamp out of leaves. Cool. Now let's make a new bunny friend for Rabbit. Not sure that's a good idea. Rabbit keeps eating the friends we make him. Aw, he really doesn't understand. Maybe we should stop making Rabbit new friends out of his food. <laughs> that was so funny. Thank you for your hospitality. I would be most delighted if we could share. Princess Tanya, I just love sharing food with friends. I agree. The queen and I share chocolate chip cookies at tea time every day. Um, sure. Let me give you a lift. So, Mr. Froggy, uh, is it all right if I call you Mr. Froggy? Well, my name is Prince. I mean, uh, Prince. Like in Paw Prince. Definitely not Royal Prince or anything like that. Yeah, you can call me Paw Prince. Well, we are quite happy to have you here, Paw Prince. That's an interesting name. Well, it's not like he would change the name his parents gave him. That would take a lot of paperwork. Didn't he mention before that he had a royal job? I suppose we'll just need to get to know him more. Tell us, poor Prince, is there anything you'd like to eat? I would be most happy to share anything that Princess Tanya is having. Um, sure. Take whatever you'd like. Ooh, those sprinkles look yummy. I, I love, love sprinkles. sprinkles. Wow, this is so fun. Um, oh yeah, uh, that's cool. <laughs> But actually, would it be all right if we added some cinnamon to the whipped cream? I love cinnamon. It reminds me of my grandma's cookies. Surely. Tonya, dear, can you ask the royal chef to make some special whipped cream with cinnamon in it? Okay. Princess Tanya knew she had to try her best to keep her promise. So she went to the kitchen to ask the chef to make a special meal for her new froggy friend. Hello? Chef Flo? Arr. Hi, Chef Flo. Thanks for putting all the extra sprinkles in the breakfast today. <laughs> Hi, you're welcome, my lady. What can I do for you? We have a guest for breakfast, and, well, he wants something special. I'm always glad to make special food for special guests. What would your new friend like? He wants cinnamon in the whipped cream. Is your new friend a frog, matey? Yes, how did you know? Oh, frogs are known to love cinnamon. Oh, cool. But I don't know if I would call him my friend. Why is that, Princess Tanya? Well, he is a frog, and I'm a human, so I don't know how I'm going to make this work. You know, when I used to work on the ships, going back and forth to the old country, I met every type of creature you can imagine. I befriended mermaids. Come swim with us, Flo. I befriended the waves. Ooh, this is so exciting. Arr, can you take us to the North Pole? Sure, make sure you wear a scarf. It's cold up there. Hold on tight. Whoa! I befriended fish? I don't understand you, but I'm sure you're nice. One day, there was a huge storm. Arr. Me and the crew were afraid our ship would sink, or worse, lead us to the lands of the dragons! Wait, dragons? That actually sounds pretty cool. You're right, dragons are awesome! Anyway, back to the story. Just when we thought things couldn't get any worse, a tornado approached! Ah, the tornado! Doomed. The tornado was scary! It could have ripped our boat to shreds! But then I thought about my kindness rule. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter six. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. 
So Chef Flo had been telling Princess Tanya about her kindness rule. My kindness rule. Your kindness rule? Yes, my kindness rule. Always be kind. Even if it's a little scary or difficult, it's cool to be kind. Yeah, you've told me that once or twice before. I've known you for a long time, princess, and you've always been very accepting, which is a very princessly thing to be. Aw, thanks. <laughs> now back to the story. Well, I thought maybe if we were kind to the tornado, it would not hurt us. Hi, tornado. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm not great. I have no friends. Everyone is afraid of me. That's so sad. That must be so tough. Nobody takes time to get to know me. I just wish I had someone to talk to. Well, I'll be your friend, Tornado. You're not afraid of me? Of course not. Would you like some stew? I would love some. Hey, it seems like you're in a real jam with this storm. How about I use my wind to take you someplace safe? Oh, like the beach? Please tell me the beach. I really, 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 really want to go to the beach. I love making sand castles, getting a suntan, drinking coconut water right from the coconut. Sure, the beach it is. That's awesome. Thank you, Tornado. Please call me Stanley. And so, the tornado picked up our ship and brought us safely to shore. To this day, me and Stanley have tea once a month. You see, Princess Tanya, just by taking a little extra time to talk to someone who is different than me, not only saved us from a really bad disaster, but I also made a new friend. Sometimes you can make a friend in the most unexpected places. Gee, thanks, Chef Flo. That's really nice to hear. I mean, maybe the frog will turn out to be one of the greatest friends I've ever had. Aw, that's so sweet. Meanwhile, back at the table, Paw Prince the Frog was cracking the royal family up with hilarious wildlife jokes. So I says to the guy, those aren't golf balls, they're lizard eggs. <laughs> Man, oh man, oh, I haven't laughed like this in ages. You are something else, Mr. Prince. Now, tell me more about that volunteer work you've been doing. Oh, well, we help people in the kingdom who need it. Whipped cream with cinnamon coming through. Sweet, literally. Dude, I'm not gonna lie, that looks really good. And you're right, it smells just like my grandma's cookies too. See, we have that in common. Yeah, I guess you're right. Princess, I would be most delighted if you shared this special treat with me. Sure. <laughs> That's Yummers. Ooh, I want to try. Me too. Well, I wouldn't mind a little smackerel of whipped cream. We can all share. So the whole royal family and the frog enjoyed sharing the frog's whipped cream and other treats too. They laughed and got to know each other more. When breakfast was over, Princess Tanya knew what she had to do. So uh, Paw Prince, you wanna stay and hang out? I have a soccer ball with your name on it. Oh, not literally your name, it's gold. Remember the gold soccer ball that you rescued for me? Yeah, I know, I know. Let's go. We're coming, We're coming too. too. Ooh, this is so exciting. Hey, Paw Prince, think fast. Ha, nice kick, Princess. The princesses and the frog had a lovely day. Not only did they play soccer, but they made necklaces out of real flowers. They went for a walk in the kingdom and tried fresh bread from the baker. They listened to some musicians playing in the town square. This has been the best day ever. Yeah, you know what? You're right. Today has been awesome. See? It's cool to make new friends and make new memories. You want to come back to the castle? It's family game night. Tonight is my pick, and I love Twister. You had me at family game night. I'm in. Hat night after dessert, of course. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> it was finally time for family game night. They played like a million rounds of Twister. Right foot red. <laughs> my oh my, you are so good at this game. 
Yeah, well, frogs have sticky toes, so Twister is pretty much my jam. One more round? Yes, left hand yellow. My, my favorite, favorite color. color. Your favorite color is yellow? OMG, your favorite color is yellow too? See, BFFs for life, I knew it. It was true. The more Tanya and Paw Prince spent time together, the more they realized they really did enjoy each other's company and had a lot in common. Left foot green. <laughs> Frog, you win again. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Told you I was good at Twister. Next time we'll play chess. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. After a fun game of Twister, Tanya and Paw Prince the Frog got ready for bed. They got into their PJs, they brushed their teeth, and combed their hair. Even though it was almost bedtime, Princess Tanya didn't want the day to end. She was having so much fun with her new frog friend. I know, how about we paint our fingernails? I'd love to, but I don't actually have nails. That's okay. We can do face masks instead. This will exfoliate your pores. Thank you. Uh, sorry I'm so slimy. It's kind of a frog thing. Tanya dear, time for bed. No staying up too late. You have a soccer game tomorrow. Okay, but where should Paw Prince sleep? I'm happy to sleep on the floor, or a wet rag if you have one. Nonsense. Only the best spa guests. Wait, I have an idea. And with that, Princess Tanya took the frog to the pool room. You could sleep in this. It's super comfy. Thank you so much, Princess Tanya. I really had a nice day. Me too. Oh, so cute. And thank you again for bringing my golden ball back. You're welcome. You must really love that ball if you were willing to go through all this trouble just to get it back. Yes, I do love my very special golden ball. We go way back. Ooh, I love stories. Tell me more. <laughs> sure. Once upon a time, I mean, a few years ago, when I was much younger, I never liked the same toys as my sisters. My family would give me dolls and super fancy things for my birthday, but I wasn't super into them. What do I do with this? I tried other things like painting, reading fairy tales, and even go-karting. This traffic is terrible. But nothing excited me. I wanted to do something where I could move around and play with other kids. One weekend, my grandma and grandpa visited. They used to be king and queen before my mom and dad. Queen grandma, king grandpa. Good morning, Tanya. You've gotten so tall. We're going to have so much fun today. Yes. And we did. Grandpa helped me with arts and crafts, and Grandma drank tea. Oh, that is so nice. It's so nice outside today. I wish we could do something fun in the sun. Yeah, play fun games outside. I have an idea. Have you heard of soccer? Huh? What's that? It's a game where you run and kick a ball with your feet. In some places, they call it football. I want to try. So me and Queen Grandma played soccer for hours. I learned how to dribble, shoot, and score. You did an amazing job, Tanya dear. Here, I have a present for you. A present? I love presents. Wow, cool. Thank you, Queen Grandma. I can't wait to play with it. Hey, pass it to me. OK. I don't see my Queen Grandma and King Grandpa anymore, but I still have the ball and I play with it every day. And every time I play soccer, I think of my grandma. Oh. <laughs> oh no, why are you sad? I'm not sad, I'm happy. That was a very nice story. It must be so great to have people in your life who are so kind. You are very lucky. You're right. Anyway, good night, Paw Prince. Good night, Princess. That night, after Princess Tanya fell asleep, she had a very strange dream. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So Princess Tanya was having a really crazy dream. 
Wow, Paw Prince, you're really good at soccer. <laughs> yes, we should be teammates for life. Do you like that idea? I do. That sounds fun. I do too. Queen Grandma, is that really you? Yes, sweet Tanya, I am so proud of you. I was just telling my new friend about you and all the good times we had together. I miss those times. Me too, Tanya. Me and Paw Prince are gonna be teammates for life. I approve and I now pronounce you goalie and center forward. And then Princess Tanya woke up in a flash. Whoa, what a strange dream. I wonder what it means. <sighs> That's so magical. Meanwhile, Paw Prince the Frog was having his own dilemma. He woke up before anyone else in the castle and went to see his friend, Mr. Sun. So the thing is, son, time is running out. What do you mean? The spell that the witch put on me a long time ago that turned me from a prince into a frog for 10 years. Ooh, that spell, go on. But once I turn back into a prince, what if things change between me and Tanya? What do you mean? Like, we've become such good friends. I don't want to ruin a good thing. Well, I think Princess Tanya will understand. And I don't want Tanya to only like me because I'm a prince. I'm more than just royalty. I want her to like me for me. Tanya has a good heart. She will like you no matter what you look like. So, Paw Prince, wait a minute, I just got that. Paw Prince, like Prince, because he's a royal prince? Whoa, this story is so crazy. Anyway, Paw Prince walked back to the castle and suddenly... Whoa, 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 wow! Uh-oh, it's happening! The 10-year spell is over! And there he was, the Royal Frog Prince! The spell was broken! That prince is so handsome! Whoa, I look good! I gotta get back to the castle before everyone wakes up! Whoa! Ouch! But all this ruckus was so loud that it woke up Tanya and she came to the door to see if her friend the frog was okay. But she was in for a surprise. Oh, Paw Prince? I heard a... Uh... Hey! What? What the? Who are you? You, you, you better stand back, mister! Yeah, 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 yeah! Tanya? Tanya! Hey! How do you know my name? Are you a spy? No, Tanya, I know I look a little different, but it's me. You? You, you, who, you're some sort of intruder in my house? I'm gonna call the cops in 30 seconds if you don't tell me what's going on here. It's me, Paw Prince. <gasps> Paw Prince? Did you eat Paw Prince and now he's talking to me from inside your belly? Open your mouth, let me see. I'll save you, Paw Prince. No, I'm actual Paw Prince. I'm not a frog anymore. So the prince explained the whole story to Princess Tanya. He told her about the spell and also apologized about hiding his true identity from her. This is crazy. But I mean, deep down you are you no matter what. So you're saying we can still be friends? Of course. So friend, do you want to come to my soccer game this afternoon? Yes, I'd love that. Oh, so cute. Princess Tanya was playing really well at her game that day. The prince watched her and saw how passionate she was about soccer and how happy she seemed. He even loved her silly victory dance after she scored a goal. She was killing it. Then he realized something. I really like Princess Tanya and not just because she's a princess, but she is so kind, she's chasing her dreams, and she's a good friend. I think I love... Dude, who are you talking to? Or, uh, I was just practicing my poetry reciting. Roses are red, violets are blue. I really like picnics and ponies, and, uh, a stew. Uh, I'm, I'm working on it. Um, okay, you're acting a little weird. No, I just really like soccer. Oh, yeah, me too. I mean, duh. And now that you're more bigger, we can finally play together. So as you guys can tell, the prince was starting to have feelings for the princess, but he wasn't sure he was ready to tell her yet. Yeah, we are still getting to know each other. I just gotta keep it cool. Uh, yeah, so we should do something or whatever. We could ride motorcycles. Whee! 
we could be cool and go to a concert. We could visit a cool ice sculpture. We could be casual and just like chill. What? You've never said that you like those things. Seriously, why are you acting so weird and not like yourself? Uh-oh, guys. What am I gonna do? Do I tell her? Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Princess Tanya had just finished her soccer game when the prince was acting really weird, but she didn't know why. Now that my game's over, what do you want to do, Paw Prince? Actually, I think I can tell you now. My real name isn't Paw Prince. It's actually Prince Jeremy. Oh, man. I'm so used to calling you Paw Prince. Oh, Paw Prince. I get it. Hey, how about I give you a ride home? You can do that? Yeah, now that I'm a human again, I can get us a carriage. Wow, cool. Can you teach me to whistle like that? Sure. First step to being able to whistle is not being a frog. <laughs> Let me try. <laughs> that was hilarious. Nailed it. <laughs> Come on, let's go. So since you're a prince, where's your kingdom? Pretty close to here. I haven't been there in so long since I became a frog. I should probably let my parents know I'm a human again. Well, why don't we go to your kingdom? You can tell your parents you're okay, and maybe you can show me things you like to do for fun there. Yeah, my parents are probably so worried. I'm like 10 years past my curfew. But let's stop at my castle first so I can change out of my soccer gear. I probably smell like a soccer field. I think you smell just fine. Wonderful even. I mean, um, <clears throat> yeah. Princess Tanya and Prince Jeremy arrived at her castle to find her family outside playing Twister again. Right hand green. Does it count if I put my hand on the grass? That's green. Hi, Tanya. And other person? Who's that? It's Paul Prince. Turns out he's a real prince who was cursed by a witch. I'm Prince Jeremy. Oh, I always knew I liked you, Paul Prince. Mom, Dad, we're gonna go visit Jeremy's parents for a bit, but I promise we won't be back after dark. Of course, dear. Princess Tanya went to her room and got ready to go to the prince's kingdom. This is so strange. I usually don't care what I wear, but I feel like I have to look so nice for the prince today. Why am I so nervous? Maybe I like him? Oh my gosh, I like him. Ah! But after a short time, Princess Tanya pulled herself together and went outside to meet Prince Jeremy. That looks so beautiful. Wow, Princess Tanya, you look fantastic. I, I mean, you always do. Uh, uh, I mean, forget I said anything. Aw, thanks. As the carriage rode off towards Prince Jeremy's kingdom, Princess Tanya felt her eyes began to grow heavy. It had been a long day. I'm just gonna catch some Z's for a sec. Oh, don't mind me. I'm so glad we're gonna be teammates for life. Me too. We make a great team, like the sun and the moon, or the grass and flowers, or a BF and GF. Yeah, just like that. Meanwhile, Prince Jeremy also had a lot on his mind. I just don't know what to do. Should I tell her how I feel? What if she doesn't feel the same? It might mess up our friendship. I would rather have Princess Tanya in my life as a friend than not at all. But little did Prince Jeremy know that Princess Tanya wasn't asleep at all. She had heard everything he said. Oh my gosh, should I tell him that I heard him say that? Princess Tanya, are you awake? Oh, yes, I'm awake now. I just woke up this very second and not any earlier than that. Uh, okay, well, we're here in my kingdom. As Princess Tanya and Prince Jeremy stepped out of the carriage, they were greeted with a beautiful sight. Wow, this place is amazing. I could live here forever. Maybe one day you could. What do you mean? I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know. What do you mean? Nothing. I mean, what? Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So Tanya and Jeremy had just arrived at his kingdom, and it was pretty cool. They were greeted by some adoring fans from the town. Prince Jeremy, is that you? You are all grown up. How 
handsome you are. Your parents are going to be so happy you're home. Aw, thank you all. And who is this beautiful friend you have with you? Beautiful? Is she beautiful? Oh, yeah, she is. I just noticed. This is Princess Tanya. Hello. We're so Welcome. happy you're here. Hi. But then, suddenly, Prince Jeremy heard a familiar voice. Jeremy! Young Jeremy, is that you? Heinrich! Prince! My dear Prince Jeremy! My oh my, you are tall! Heinrich! It's been far too long. Princess Tanya, this is my family's butler and our dear friend, Heinrich. It's so nice to meet you. <laughs> but what's happened to you? Well, the day you left us, do you remember? Yep, we were playing croquet. Four! But when I came back, you were gone, vanished, and I called and called after you for hours. I'm so <laughs> sorry. That's so sad. Let the sadness be over. Why? I'm feeling so many emotions. My heart is happy again now that you've returned, Prince Jeremy. Yay! Hey, since we are celebrating, think we can go see my parents? Why, of course! The reunion of Prince Jeremy and his parents was one for the record books. There was laughter, tears, stories, and all-around happiness. Oh, Queen Charlotte and King Liam, it's so cool to meet you, and becoming friends with your son has been so special. Well, you guys came on the perfect day. Tonight is our annual ice cream dance party. We'd love for you to join. I, I love, love dancing. dancing. <laughs> <laughs> That night, at the ice cream dance party, Princess Tanya and Prince Jeremy had a blast. He introduced her to old friends. They looked up at the stars. They danced. They ate tons of ice cream sundaes. They even kicked a soccer ball around. And they danced some more. I'm having so much fun. I just wish my family was here to experience this too. <laughs> But what Tanya didn't know was that Prince Jeremy had already secretly planned a big surprise. All of a sudden, some familiar faces showed up at the dance party. We're here. You know we can't miss a party. We have FOMO. Ooh, I like to shake it, shake it. We came as soon as we heard the word ice cream. Yay, I'm so happy. Ah, Prince Jeremy, you planned this? Well, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, Princess Tanya? Yeah? The thing is, I wanted to invite your family here so that they could be together with my family and we could all share in this special moment. Um, what special moment? Well, the thing is, when the witch put that spell in me to become a frog, the catch was that whoever I was hanging out with when the spell was broken was who I should marry. Um, and who were you hanging out with? You! <laughs> But it's not just because of the spell. Since the moment I met you, there was something special about you. And the more we became friends, I knew I was falling in love with you. And I want to marry you and live happily ever after. Um, that's a lot. I really like you too, but we kind of just met not too long ago. Maybe we should start by going on a date. You're right, I like that idea. And that night, everyone was so happy and relieved to be together. The two families danced the night away. And little secret, Princess Tanya and Prince Jeremy did get married. And they smerged their two kingdoms together. And all the people lived together in harmony. And of course, they all loved playing soccer together. And you know what? They lived happily ever after. That was such a great ending. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Ow. What's the matter? You don't like dodgeball? I like dodgeball just fine, but we weren't playing dodgeball. You simply threw the ball at my head. See, that I don't like. Whatever, Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. That's not my name. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein, Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Ah! ah! Monster, run! Thank you for chasing away those bullies, but I have to ask, are you a nice monster or a mean monster? Ah! 
Okay, I'm gonna take a wild, possibly dangerous guess and say that you seem like a nice monster. I'm Mary. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading Frankenstein. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, I'm Mary Shelley Frankenstein, sister to the world's biggest mischief-making little brother, Victor Frankenstein. You've all heard that story, of course, but I'm here to tell you my version. Okay, here goes. Once upon a time, long, long ago. Okay, it was actually pretty recent, but I like it when stories start that way. <laughs> anyway, once upon a time, not very long ago, there was a boy named Victor. Victor Frankenstein. That's Dr. Frankenstein. He's not a doctor, obviously. He's ten. <laughs> ten and a half. Anyway, one day he was bored. And when Victor Frankenstein gets bored, bad things happen. For example, one time he filled all my shoes with slime. Ew! Victor! That is so not cool. And then one time he put baking soda and vinegar in his teacher's coffee. And yeah, it exploded. Victor! And this one time, oh, this is really bad, he put glue on the toilet seat and my dad got stuck. Ah, Victor? So like I was saying, bored Victor equals bad Victor. And that's how the story begins. I'm bored. I want to make something, something big, Something bad, something epic. I know. Today I'm gonna create a monster! Let's keep reading. Victor went down to his laboratory, AKA our basement, and got to work. That's where he did all his experiments. I should have enough to work with down here. Hmm, let's see. Some fishing hooks, I can use those. Slinky, check. Some nuts and bolts and screws and stuff, sure. Modeling clay, finger paints, glue, grandpa's toupee, perfect. A garbage can, some brooms, a mop, googly eyes, a couple of my sister's patriotic girl dolls, my old teddy bear, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Wait, no, I didn't mean it, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Promise, forgive me? I love you too, Teddy. Aw, that's sweet, but don't be fooled. Victor was up to a seriously naughty scheme. Now back to my seriously naughty scheme. It's time to create my monster. A monster that will wreak havoc and destroy the whole world. <laughs> oh no, don't be scared, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. My monster won't destroy you. Now, time to work. Victor worked all day into the night, not even stopping for snack time. He snipped, ripped, chopped, blew, Fastened, refastened, attached thingamabobs and whatchamacallits until finally he was satisfied. My monster! Now to bring him to life! It's alive! Oh no. Okay, I thought that would work. It's alive? How do I turn this thing on? It's. It's, it's alive! <laughs> yes, and now we will unleash chaos onto the world. <laughs> okay, monster, let's go! Oh, are you hungry? Uh. Let's see, what do monsters eat? There's some leftover meatloaf in here. It's really gnarly, so you might like that. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, you get enough to eat yet? We have to go wreak havoc and chaos and stuff. Uh. Whoa, awesome! Hey, wait for me! Victor, you stop right there, young man. Who made this mess? My monster did it? Right, sure, a monster did it. Well, guess who's going to clean it up? Me? That's right. But, oh, no buts. But there was a but, a big one. A real, live monster was on the loose! How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Everywhere the monster went, people screamed and ran. They all thought he was a big and scary monster, but really, he was probably more afraid than anyone. The world was brand new to him. 
and he couldn't help but be frightened. Finally, he found a nice resting spot and fell asleep. Okay, so maybe it wasn't such a good resting spot because during recess, the jungle gym is a pretty happening spot. And it wasn't very long until... And that woke the monster. Oh no, run! The monster felt a little bit safer in the woods. He sat there and watched the playground waiting for the kids to leave. A bell rang and the kids left. But then an older group of kids came out, including me. Ow. What's the matter? You don't like dodgeball? I like dodgeball just fine, but we weren't playing dodgeball. You simply threw the ball at my head. See, that I don't like. Whatever, Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. That's not my name. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Ah! Ah! Monster, run! Take that, bad guy! I think that was his attempt at a smile. Thank you for chasing away those bullies, but I have to ask, are you a nice monster or a mean monster? Okay, I'm gonna take a wild, possibly dangerous guess and say that you seem like a nice monster. I'm Mary. Well, recess is over, so I have to go. See ya! <laughs> oh no, you're sad. Okay, how about this? You stay. Stay here, okay? And I'll be back later. Can you nod and let me know you understand? Okay. Great. <laughs> School's out at three. I'll see you then. Back in the classroom, I made a list. Fun learning activities for monsters. Then after school, I met back up with the monster and we got to work. First, we practiced language arts. Repeat after me. Monster. 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 Mon. Okay, that's pretty close. Now add the stir. Monster. Monster. Great. Okay, I should really teach you some more words, but that took like an hour, so let's move on to something else. Wow, this is so fun. How about some social skills? Let's try a handshake. Ah. Now we put our hands together and then we shake. Ah. Oh. 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 Ah. Okay, you're doing really great. But, can you put me down? <sighs> Good, thanks. All right, next on the list was how do you high five, but let's move on. <laughs> we spent the rest of the afternoon doing our lessons. The monster learned how to sing. <laughs> and how to dance. Go monster, go monster, go, go monster. And we worked on hygiene. Yes, see, after you eat a whole handful of worms and bugs, it's good to wash your hands. <laughs> and speaking of eating, it's time for me to go home for dinner. Do you think you'll be okay here for tonight? <laughs> yeah, you better come with me. I'll hide you in my old playhouse. But by the time I got home and the monster was all settled in, news had gotten out. Reports of the mystery monster have been coming in all day. From people like this gentleman, I nearly ran him over in my car last night. I don't know if my insurance would have covered that. And these innocent children. I was just minding my own business when he tried to hit me with a ball. City officials are urging citizens to stay inside and lock your doors. But some local vigilantes want to take matters into their own hands. Yeah, we're gonna get that monster. I ain't afraid of no monster. Uh-oh. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. According to eyewitness reports, the monster has caused over $11,000 in damage, and an old fashioned pitchfork and torch wielding gang of locals has sworn to capture the beast. Yeah. yeah. Back to you, Chuck. 
Oh dear! I told you it was the monster that wrecked the kitchen. Go to bed, Victor. Well, I couldn't just leave the monster outside in my old playhouse, not with a bunch of vigilantes out there hunting him. <gasps> Shh, okay, you can sleep in here, but you have to be quiet. That's sweet. Now, do you want the top bunk or the bottom? Uh. Oh, you're not sleepy? Do you want to play a game? Uh. So we played some games. We played Twister, Right Foot Blue. Uh. Eh, close enough. Jenga, Jenga, Jenga. Uh. Then we went full on slumber party and did spa night. That was weird. I thought I heard my monster in here. Your monster? Yeah, I created him in the basement. What's he doing with all that gunk on his face? We were having a spa night. What, monsters don't do spa nights? Monsters are supposed to be ferocious and fierce and wreak havoc. He's not that kind of monster. I found him in the woods by the playground. He saved me from bullies and now there are bullies looking for him. We have to protect our monster. Our monster? I think you mean my monster. He's coming with me. No way! Hey! Uh, uh, uh. Hey, keep it down in there. Quick, hide the monster. What on earth is going on in here? Nothing, Mom. Yep, nothing to see here. Uh-uh. What was that? Oh, my stomach. I don't think that leftover meatloaf sat too well with me, but uh, I'll be okay. <laughs> okay, well, time for bed. Yes, Mom. Okay, Mom. Now. Ugh. Meatloaf. You sure you're okay? Yep. <laughs> Good night. See ya mañana. Bye. <laughs> okay. Good night. Let's keep reading. Phew. That was close. <sighs> We can't keep him here. There's no way mom and dad will let us keep a monster. True. But we can't take him outside either. The vigilante bully gang is looking for him. What if they hurt him? But he's a monster. He could just destroy the gang. Easy peasy. You seem to be forgetting that he's not the destructive, dangerous type. He's a big sweet softy. Look. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's not gonna wreak any havoc. Hey, I know. Let's take him to Professor Weirdly's house. She'll know what to do. Great idea. Science teachers for the win. <laughs> okay, now how do we get him out of here without attracting attention? Of course. Uh -huh. Perfect. Let's go. So we set out into the night with our monster. It was a little scary, but there's no time to fear when you're on a mission. Super brave, right? Well, that was all about to change. Didn't know it yet, but the vigilante gang was closing in. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Ooh, I didn't see that coming. Chapter four, here we go. So all was going according to plan. We were on our way to see Professor Weirdly, the science teacher at our school. She would know what to do with the STEM project gone awry. Okay, cool. I can see Professor Weirdly's house. We're almost there. Is that what I think it is? Yep. What do we do now? Um, we could blast them with a giant water balloon or some other projectiles. Or we could just cast a protective force field around ourselves. Ooh, or we could sick a giant robot on them. Or we could run. That's always an option. Let's go. Oh no, run! What do we have here? Oh, hi sir. <laughs> nice weather we're having, huh? What are you kids doing out here this time of night? Who, us? Yes, you. We're just out for a little evening stroll. And you? I'm out looking for that monster that's been terrorizing the town. Oh, I haven't heard anything about that. Have you, Victor? No, Mary, not a word. A monster, you say? Who's that? Hmm? I said, who's that? Oh, her? Yes, uh, that's our grandma. Yep, <laughs> old granny. But don't bother trying to talk to her. She's hard of hearing. Uh, Granny, we're just telling this nice pitchfork wielding gentleman that you're a little hard of hearing. <laughs> uh, well, I guess it's our bedtime. Good night. Excuse us. <laughs> oh, hi guys. We were just leaving. Come on, Granny. <laughs> 
seemed too easy, right? We were just gonna walk away, but then suddenly we heard, Meow. Uh. Come on, Gran, time for bed. Uh. Yeah, that's a kitty, let's go. But the monster, being a big old sweetheart, jumped uh. into the tree to rescue the kitten. Great. Wow, your granny sure is spry. Hey, she saved the kitten. Okay, Granny, good job. Now let's go. Uh oh. That's him. That's the monster. Get him. Oh, this place is crazy. The gang was all riled up, and things were getting very scary. One guy swung his pitchfork up at the monster. Ha! I'll get ya. Uh. But he missed. Phew. <laughs> but then it landed. Ah! Uh, hey, you stuck me. And that guy had been waving around a torch, so when he got poked with the pitchfork, he accidentally let another guy's pants on fire. Arr! It was chaos! Finally! We could have just run away at that point, but the monster was such a big old sweetie that he just had to jump down and help. Arr! Ah, that's better. Phew, thanks. Hey, wait, he's being nice. Monsters aren't nice. Well, this one is. He protected me from bullies. He rescued that kitten, and now he's helping you. Yeah, and I created him specifically to be a supervillain, too. I don't know what went wrong. So will you guys leave him alone now? Are you sure he's good? Look at him. <coughs> yeah, OK, we'll let you go. But you all better get home soon. It's late. We know, just one more stop. Come on guys, let's go to Professor Weirdly's. Yay, I'm so happy. And Victor, you say you made this all by yourself? Yep, awesome, right? Very impressive. Where will you keep him, Professor? I think he'll be happy at school. He can live in the lab. So from that night on, our monster lived in Professor Weirdly's science lab at the school. It was great. He took care of the class pets. He helped kids with their homework. Well, he tried anyway. He even joined the cheer team. <laughs> he was the best school monster ever, and Victor and I got to see him every day. It was awesome. Yeah, but next time, I'll create a super bad monster that wreaks havoc and mayhem and destruction and, and... Oh boy, here we go. Wow, that was so much fun. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Maybe we can go look for the Good Witch of the North. Maybe she'll help us. But when Dorothy and her friends left the Emerald City, they were in for a surprise. <laughs> oh, Dorothy! The Wicked Witch of the West! Run! But the Wicked Witch was too fast for them. Her flying monkey swooped in and snatched up the whole gang. Take that scarecrow and scatter his straw around until he's just a pile of clothes. And put that tin man in the recycling bin. Put the lion in a cage and sell him to the zoo! What about her? Take Dorothy to my castle. I'll take care of her. <laughs> now fly, monkeys, fly! Hi, kids. I'm Miss Booksy, and this is story time. Today, we're reading The Wizard of Oz. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi. <laughs> I lived in a place called Kansas with my aunt and uncle. <laughs> uncle Henry and Aunt Em. Hello. Hello. We lived on the prairie, which is a great big piece of land that stretches for miles and miles and miles and miles and is very flat. So flat and empty that you could stand in your front yard and see all around you. Oh look, there's Farmer Ted. Hey Farmer Ted! <laughs> he can't hear me of course, he's way too far away. What? <laughs> Life on our farm was very hard. Aunt Em and Uncle Henry worked so hard that they never even had time to smile. In fact, when I was little, Aunt Em had completely forgotten what happiness sounded like. So whenever I laughed, she would do this. <laughs> oh, heavens to Betsy, you startled me. Everything at our house looked sad. The hot sun had baked everything until the land and all the buildings and even the people looked dried out and gray. That is so sad. Yeah, just like that. 
Just like an old black and white movie. The only thing that made me happy was my little dog, Toto. <laughs> Hi, Toto. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Is it you? Is it you? <laughs> Sorry, but come on, look at how cute he is. Okay, on with the story. Here's where things get exciting. So, one day Toto and I were playing fetch with the stick. <laughs> That's literally the only toy either of us had, but we made the best of it. <laughs> when we heard a crazy loud sound. It sounded like a train. I know because I rode a train once all the way to Oklahoma. <laughs> anyway, the sound was getting louder and louder and louder. Toto, we have to hide. I think a freight train is coming for us or something. <laughs> Wait, but there aren't any tracks here. How in the heck? <laughs> ah, a flying cow. <gasps> Dorothy, a cyclone's coming. Cyclone? Oh no, cyclones are super scary. You know what a cyclone is, right? Tornado, twister, dust devil. Ah, this is scary. Yeah, that. Toto, the house is totally flying. Oh my, this is even more exciting than the train ride. I wonder when we're gonna land or where we're gonna land. Oh, oh Toto, I think we've landed. I hope we're not too far from home. I wouldn't know the first thing about moving a house back into the yard. Okay, we're definitely far from home. I bet we're even farther than Oklahoma. <laughs> What's that? A kitty cat? <laughs> <laughs> hey, who are you? He's a munchkin, and he's very grateful to you, noble sorceress. Grateful? To me? Why? <laughs> because you squished the Wicked Witch of the East. What? Me? No way, I wouldn't even squish a fly. Ask Toto. <laughs> But you did squish her, or your house did anyway. Look! But I didn't do that on purpose, I promise! Don't worry, we're happy she's gone. She was a very wicked witch who ruled over the munchkins for hundreds of years. Really? Yes, she was wicked. She was awful! She was the worst. Are you a munchkin? No, dear, I'm the witch of the north. Oh, a witch? A, a witch? Oh, no. But you seem nice. I thought all witches were wicked. I'm a good witch. Unfortunately, a good witch's powers are never as strong as a wicked one's. But now there is only one wicked witch left. Ah, ah. Where? Not here, sillies. The last wicked witch rules over the West. And she's even more wicked than her sister. Hey, she's gone. Did she come back to life? Oh, no. Zombie witches must be the absolute worst. No, no. See, when a witch is defeated, she disappears. Poof, like magic. Yay! The munchkins love magic. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, check this out. Ah! Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, It was only a trick. I thought you liked magic tricks. Magic's supposed to be nice. That was scary. Sheesh, tough crowd. I probably ought to get back to Kansas. Are you the good witch of Kansas? Me? No, there are no witches in Kansas. <laughs> but you did fly here. Oh, no, that was just my house. <laughs> my house did the flying, but I can't fly. <laughs> I promise I'm not a witch. So anyway, how do I get back? Is there a train or something? Nope, guess you'll just have to stay. Yay, you can be our queen. All hail queen. What's your name? Dorothy? All oh, hail Queen, Queen Dorothy! Dorothy. Hooray! Yeah. Hurrah! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on! Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The munchkins cheered and celebrated their new queen. All oh, hail the queen, queen Dorothy! Our queen! But Dorothy didn't want to be queen. She just wanted to go home. I don't want to live in, wait, what is this place called? Oz, dear. You are in the land of Oz. Why are you sad? Your house is right here. Yes, but it's not in the right place. And I'm sure Uncle Henry and Aunt Em must be so confused. They've never had their whole house just disappear like this. Let us cheer you up. Quick, someone tell a joke. Why didn't the Wicked Witch of the East cross the road? Why? Because you squished her with your house. <laughs> what? Too soon? Okay, that's pretty good, but how about this one? I just flew in from Kansas, and boy, my house is tired. <laughs> that was
was so funny. Okay. Anyway, so we were talking about how I might get home. Can't go to the south. It's a great big desert where no one could survive. Except for the quadlings, but they eat sand and drink sunshine. Weird. Next. And you can't go east because there are big mountains with giant birds and wapangs. Don't know what that is, but it sounds scary. Next. <laughs> and you could try and go west, but that's where the other wicked witch lives, and she is seriously wicked. No thanks. <laughs> Guys, what am I gonna do? Well, you could go center. Go center? Yes, go straight to the center of Oz, to the city of emeralds. That's where the wizard lives. He can help you get home. The wizard? Is he wicked? Oh, not at all. He's very wise. Well, how do I get to the center? To get to the city of emeralds, one must follow the road of yellow bricks. Road of yellow bricks? That road right there. Will it be dangerous? I will bless you with as much good magic as I can, but you must be careful. Good luck, Dorothy! I'm too tired and hungry to start my journey now. May I stay here a night, Munchkins? Of course you can, Queen Dorothy. The Munchkins were so excited to have Dorothy stay with them, even if it were only for one night. They prepared a feast of beautiful fruits that Dorothy had never seen, and lots of tiny cakes filled with candy and ice cream. Delicious! We want you to have these, Queen Dorothy. Me? Really? Well, you are the one who defeated the Wicked Witch. And they're also way too big for our munchkin feet. They're really beautiful. And legend says they're magic. Maybe they'll protect you on your journey to the Emerald City. Yay! Magic to the rescue! Well, they are super comfy, and they do match my dress. <laughs> okay, I'll take them. The next morning, Dorothy and Toto said goodbye to the munchkins and began their trip down the yellow brick road when they passed a farm where something odd caught Dorothy's eye. Toto, look at that scarecrow. He almost looks like a real man, doesn't he? <laughs> Did you just wink? Maybe. <laughs> hey, you can talk? I've never seen a talking scarecrow. Well, how do you do, Mr. Scarecrow? Not very well. Oh, no? A lot of crows here? It's not that. I'm just very uncomfortable up here. I mean, I got a pole stuck in my back. But all scarecrows do. Well, trust me, it's terrible. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Who's that? The munchkin who put you up there? No, the crows. Ugh, <coughs> get out of here. Oh, right. <laughs> well, why don't you just get down from there? That would be amazing. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, wait, I know. It's because I don't have a brain. You don't? Nope, nothing but straw between my ears. That's too bad. I really like having a brain. At least I think I do. But it's my brain that makes me think that. Uh, I don't get it. Sorry, I'll help you down. Huzzah! So, what's your name? Oh, how impolite of me. I'm Dorothy from Kansas. I'm on my way to see the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard? I bet he has brains. Yes, and he's going to help me get back home. Hey, maybe he could give you some brains. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Mm, the whole brain thing. <laughs> oh, right, the brain thing. See, it's really annoying. Well, it's settled. You'll come with me to the Emerald City, and the wizard will help me get to Kansas, and he'll give you a break. Huzzah! And off they went to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 3, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. There they are, Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow traveling the yellow brick road. They walked for miles and miles, and finally, Ew! I'm pooped! Let's just sit down and rest for a while. Okay. Wait, why? Because I'm tired and hungry. That means I need to eat something? I'm never hungry. And that's a good thing because my mouth is only painted on. If I cut a hole there, all my straw would fall out. Then you'd have a very funny shaped head. It's true. Dorothy, can you tell me more about Kansas? Sure. I live there with my Aunt Em and Uncle Henry and Toto, of course. <laughs> it's very quiet, except for when there's a cyclone and everything is all gray. <laughs> Not beautiful and colorful like here. 
Well, why do you want to go back if it's so nice here? Because Kansas is my home, and there's no place like home. Oh, so cute. Then why did you come here in the first place? I didn't mean to. My house just landed here after a storm. Long story. <laughs> and then yada yada, I squished the Wicked Witch of the East, and now I have her shoes. Do you like them? They are very pretty. But wait, did you say you squished the Wicked Witch of the East? Yes, but not on purpose. The munchkins were very happy. <laughs> I'm their queen now. Whoa! But enough about me. Tell me your story. Me? I don't know anything. I was only made one day ago. Ooh, tell me about that. Okay. I was made by a farmer. First he made my head, and he painted on ears. Then I could hear. Next I had eyes, and I could see. Then the farmer painted on a nose. I could smell corn! And crows! Yikes! Crows! Luckily, I couldn't scream because I didn't have a mouth yet, so the farmer didn't know that I was afraid of the crows. Imagine, a scarecrow scared of crows. Not good. When the farmer finished putting me all together, he stuck me up on a stick in the middle of the field. I didn't like being left alone with all those crows, so I tried to run, but it was no use. I was stuck. The crows all laughed at me and pecked my head and ate up all the farmer's corn right in front of me. They were so mean. That's so sad. Well, except for one very old crow. Just ignore those silly crows. But why aren't they afraid of me? I'm supposed to be a scarecrow. They know you're stuck up here and don't know how to get down. If only you had a brain. And I decided right then that I would get a brain one day. I just didn't know how. Then you came along, and now we're on our way to get me a brain from the great Oz of Emerald City. Speaking of, I'm ready to journey on. Let's go. Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow set off again on the road of yellow bricks. Everything was going just fine, until... What was that? You're asking me? I don't have a brain. I don't really know stuff. Oh, right. <laughs> Wait, I think I hear it again. <laughs> Shh, Toto! I hope it's not a crow. Ah! Don't chop me! I would never! <laughs> Why are you groaning? I've been stuck in this position for a whole year. It's very uncomfortable. Well, what can I do to help? Get my oil can, please. Oh, my joints are rusted stiff. Get my neck first. Ah, much better. Wow, this is so fun. Now my arm, please. What a relief. I thought I might be holding that forever. Feel better? A million times better. You saved my life. Dorothy saved my life too. And she squished the Wicked Witch of the East. Whoa, are you a witch? No, why does everyone keep asking me that? I'm just a girl from Kansas. We're on our way to the Wizard of Oz. I'm getting a brain. And I'm hoping to get back home. Do you know the great Oz? I never met him, but hey, do you think he could give me a heart? You don't have a heart? How sad, I think. It is sad, enough to make me cry. But if I cry, I'll get all stiff and rusty again. Well, you absolutely must join us on our trip. To the wizard we go! Wait, oil can! Good call. Okay, now to the wizard we go. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on! Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hey, look, 475 smiles to Emerald City. I think they mean miles. No, distance is measured in smiles in Oz. How long are they? I don't know. Neither do I. But maybe that's because we don't have brains. You don't have a brain either? Nope. I used to have both. And believe me, the heart is more important. Why is that? The heart is the way to love. Love is happiness. And happiness is the best thing in the world. Well, how did you lose your heart in the first place? It's a long story. We like stories. <laughs> okay.
I was a wood chopper, chopping trees and selling the wood for a living. Then I met a girl and we fell in love. I asked her to marry me and she said yes. I was so happy. Yay, what a happy ending. There's more. She lived with a selfish old woman who didn't want her to get married. She wanted the girl to stay and work for her forever. The woman went to the wicked witch and paid her to curse me. A curse? Oh no. What did the witch do? She took my leg. How was I supposed to work standing on just one leg? Oh my! I went to a tinsmith who made me a new leg made of tin. The old woman was very mad. She paid for another curse and this time I lost my other leg. The tin smith built me another leg of tin. Then what happened? Next, the witch cursed my arms and my head and all of me until I was a man made of tin. But the girl still loved me and I loved her. The wicked witch did the worst thing she could possibly do. What? what? She cursed my heart. <coughs> the tinsmith didn't know how to make a new heart for me. And without a heart, I couldn't feel love. I've been sad and lonely ever since. What a sad story. I think. Maybe if I had a brain, I would have understood it better. We'll get you your heart. The wizard is wise and good, and he'll help all of us. I just know it. The gang continued toward the City of Emeralds, saddened by the Tin Woodman story. But soon, sadness gave way to scaredness. These woods are kind of scary. I wonder how many more schmiles until we're out of here. We're safe. I have my oil can. The scarecrow can't feel anything. And you have the mark of the good witch and the magic slippers. But Toto, what's protecting him? We are. Ah, we are? Oh, Whew, that was a close one. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A big beast like you biting a poor little dog. I didn't bite him. No, but you tried to. You're nothing but a great big coward. I know, I'm sorry. Going after a scarecrow, a tin man, and a tiny dog. Oh, scarecrow, that sounds scary. See, I'm the most cowardly coward who ever lived. It's okay to be scared sometimes, but you can't go around picking on smaller things just so you can feel brave. Where'd you get your courage? I don't know. I guess I've just naturally been tough. I wish I was tough. I've always been afraid of everything. Bears, spiders, kittens. Kittens? Who's afraid of kittens? Mice are, but I'm afraid of mice too. Hi, Vey. Let's go, guys. Wait. You're just gonna leave me here? Out in these scary woods all by myself? Let me come with you. I'll protect you. Oh, you will, will you? <laughs> I'm really sorry I scared you. It was a silly old thing to do, I know. I just wanted to look fearless. Oh, please tell Toto I'm sorry too. Wait, we're going to see the Wizard of Oz. I'm going to get a brain. And I'm getting a heart. Maybe the wizard could give you courage? Is the wizard very scary? Wait, never mind. I don't even care. I'll go ask the Wizard of Oz for courage. See, you're already a little braver. <laughs> what are you asking the wizard for? I just want to go home to Kansas. Is Kansas a scary place? Wait, wait, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Then let's go find that wizard. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, the Lion, and Toto were officially off to see the wizard. The Scarecrow would ask for brains, the Tin Man for a heart, and the Lion would get some courage. And that is, if he could work up the nerve to ask. <laughs> and of course, Dorothy and Toto would ask the good wizard to get back home to Kansas. All they had to do was follow the road of yellow bricks. Uh-oh. Now why wouldn't they build a yellow brick bridge as well? It doesn't look so far. I could probably jump across. Well, look who's being brave. <laughs> I'd be way too scared to cross. Now why'd you have to go and say that? For a second I forgot I was a fraidy cat. You can do it. Don't be scared. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. 
but you're gonna have to carry each of us across one at a time. You mean I have to do it more than once? Take me first. I'm made of straw, so if you drop me, I won't be hurt. All you have to do is stuff me back together. Good thinking. And I don't even have a brain. And me with no courage. What a team. Here we go. Wow, this is so fun. Woohoo, you did it. I knew you could. <laughs> the cowardly lion bravely carried across the others one by one. Oh, great work. <laughs> now let's go meet the wizard. The gang marched forth and soon found themselves in a very dark and scary forest. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Nope, nope, not okay. What is that? Kalitas. What's a Kalita? A very scary creature. Well, you thought Toto was scary, so. <laughs> Kalitas had the body of a bear and the head of a tiger. Oh my, uh, that is scary. Told ya. Oh, what are we gonna do? Run! That's way too far to jump across. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Hey, the Tin Man could cut down that tree and we could use it to walk across. Splendid idea. Okay, steady now. The Kalitas are coming. Oh, yay, we all made it. Kalitas! Ah! I've got it. Tin Man, chop this side of the tree. Ah! Phew, that was close. Great job, Tinny. <laughs> hey, it was the Scarecrow's idea. You sure you don't already have a brain in there? <laughs> Dress straw, I'm sure of it. If you say so. You guys ready to hit the yellow brick road again? Just a second, my heart is racing. Ooh, can I listen? Wow, what a ticker. You'll get one soon. And I'll get my courage. And I'll get my brain. Let's go. It had been a long and scary journey so far, but they were determined to find the wonderful Wizard of Oz, even if it meant they might run into the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy, Toto, the Scarecrow, the Tin Woodman, and the Lion continued along the road of yellow bricks, anxious and excited to find the wizard. Look, a river. Oh good, I sure am thirsty after all that jumping and running. Um, guys, how are we going to get across? Again? Okay, seriously, who designed this road? This is just poor planning. It's too wide for me to jump. It's too wide for the tree thing. Hey, what if I chop some wood and build a raft? Great idea. <laughs> the Tin Woodman got to work and soon built a perfectly seaworthy vessel. The gang hopped on and began to head toward the other shore. There she is, the brat who squished my sister. It's payback time, sweetheart. <sighs> Suddenly, the wind picked up and the river began rushing. Oh no, we're floating away from the yellow brick road. And straight for the land of the Wicked Witch of the West, the scariest witch of all. The witch? Oh no. What are we gonna do? Well, I can't swim, I'll fall apart. And I'll rest. Pedal harder. They all paddled as hard as they could, but the poor scarecrow got his paddle stuck in the mud and the raft went rushing on down the river without him. Dorothy! We'll come back for you, I promise! Well, here I am stuck on a pole again, and this time in the middle of a river. I guess I'll never get any brains. Maybe I can swim against the current. What about us? Grab a hold of my tail and I'll pull you to shore. Ah, there's a fish! It's just a tiny little goldfish. It touched me! Phew, we made it. But where are we? We're so far from the yellow brick road and our poor scarecrow. This is so sad. Don't cry, you'll rust. We'll just have to walk along the river until we find him. Dorothy, Toto, the lion, and the tin man walked along the river looking for their friend. 
There he is! Shoo! Ah! Go away! Whew, that was a close one. Dorothy, you came back! Of course! We're here to save you! Okay, yeah, um, how are we gonna do that? There's no wood on this side of the river, so I can't build another raft! Lion, can you swim out there to rescue him? I'm so tired and weak from all the swimming. Plus, I'm scared of crows. A lion scared of a crow? That's silly. Ah, big stork! Our friend is out there stuck. We have to save him. He's coming with us to find the Wizard of Oz. This isn't the right road. You need the yellow one. We know, we just got a little off track. <laughs> but now we can't leave until we save the Scarecrow. I can try to lift him. Mind you, I'm used to carrying babies, not straw people. He might be too heavy. Oh, he's very light. Okay. Oh no, incoming! Oh shush, I'm here to save ya. Whoa! Hooray! Thank you so much! <laughs> no prob. Well, I better be on my way. Watch out for the Wicked Witch of the West. She's a tough nut. We will. See ya. <laughs> well, gang, shall we? Yup. I think the yellow brick road is just across this field of flowers. Ooh, poppies! They're so pretty. <laughs> Yes, they are. And just wait until you smell them. The Wicked Witch of the West knew these poppies gave off a very powerful scent, one that would make even the largest beasts fall into a never-ending sleep. When you're asleep, I'll take back those sapphire slippers, and then you'll be powerless. I'm getting sleepy. <sighs> Me too. Sweet dreams. <laughs> What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. We really need to get back to the yellow brick road. But maybe just a little nappy wappy foist. Yeah, <sighs> nighty night. That's right, go to sleep, Dorothy. Now, time for mama to get some new shoes. <laughs> Okay, let's try this again. Meow. Must be having a nightmare, scaredy cat. Okay, back to the shoes. Ha, they're mine. Wait a second. They're stuck. The witch pulled with all her might, but she could not remove the shoes. They must be protected by magic. Well, I also have magic and my flying monkeys. The Wicked Witch of the West summoned her flying monkeys. What's up, boss? Take this girl to my castle! Aye, aye. <laughs> How is Dorothy gonna get home now? Sleep tight, boys! When you wake, your little friend Dorothy will be long gone, and the sapphire slippers will be mine! All mine! <laughs> Once the flying monkeys had carried Dorothy away from the poppies, the flower's power wore off, and Dorothy woke up. <laughs> this frightened the monkeys. And they promptly drop Dorothy to the ground below. Ugh. Ow! Ugh. Okay, that was scary. But look, I'm back on the yellow brick road. But what about my friends? If I go back for them, the poppies will make me fall asleep forever. What to do? Dorothy thought and thought, but she couldn't come up with a solution. Until... Wait a second. These shoes are supposed to be magical. And the good witch supposedly blessed me with some kind of magic. I must be able to do something. Hmm. Dorothy tried to get her magic shoes to come up with something magic. She tapped them together. She tried doing a dance routine. She tried saying some magic sounding words. Ta-da! Abracadabra! Kazam! But nothing seemed to work. It's useless. What is? Who said that? I did, down here. That is amazing. Ooh. Hi! <laughs> you seemed upset just now. Anything I can do to help? I don't think so. My friends and I are supposed to go see the Wizard of Oz, but we fell asleep in that field of poppies over there. But then I woke up and these flying monkeys were carrying me away. I screamed and they dropped me. And here I am. Flying monkeys, eh? They work for the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh no. But it's a good thing you got out. The poppies are very dangerous. Your friends will sleep forever if we don't save them. But how do we do that? The other mice and I can go get them. We've lived here forever and the poppies don't bother us. 
but my friends are way too big for mice to carry. They may be too much for one mouse alone, but the whole crew, piece of cake. The mouse squeaked out a call to the other mice, and soon there were hundreds of mice gathering around Dorothy. You wait here. We'll be back in a sec. And the mice scurried off into the field of poppies. Dorothy waited, and soon she saw her friends, still in a deep sleep, being carried across the flowers. You should have warned us that one of your friends is a scary lion! Oh, he's not that scary at all. Watch! <laughs> Eek! Mouse! See? What's going on? We all fell asleep in the field of poppies, and then the wicked witch's flying monkeys took me. But then I fell down here, and these lovely mice helped save you. How kind! And look, we're so close to the Emerald City! Let's go! Bye-bye, mouse friends. Thanks again for helping us. Anytime. Goodbye. And once again, Dorothy and her friends were off to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 8, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy and the gang skipped along the yellow brick road, and before long, they saw it. <gasps> the Emerald City. Whoa. Let's go. Hello. Yes. We're here to see the wizard. And why, may I ask? Because I want a brain. And I a heart. I want courage. And I want to go home to Kansas. Hold, please. Mm -hmm. Yes? Oh, OK. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I see. Hmm. <laughs> oh, very well. OK, goodbye. The wizard will see you. Wonderful. Yes, he is. Right this way. Dorothy and the gang were led through the all-green, very sparkly, emerald-laden city. Wow! Pretty! I find this green very soothing. You first. Wish me luck. I hope they'll be okay. Hello? What do you want? Hi, sir. I want to ask you, please, if you will help me return home. Where is home? Kansas, sir. Oh, you don't say. Oh, have you been there? <clears throat> and why should I grant you this request? Because you're wonderful, and everyone says so. Even the Good Witch of the North said so. She did? I mean, how do you know her? Oh, I met her in the Munchkin Land. See, I landed in Oz rather accidentally. My house, it got swept up in a tornado, and I... It landed on the Wicked Witch of the East, and it squished her. Long story short, everybody told me to come here and that you could help me get home to Kansas. So, will you help me? You squish the Wicked Witch? Yes. I will help you get home. You will? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! But you must do something first. Anything. Your wish is my command. You must defeat the Wicked Witch of the West. Hold up, what? You squish the Wicked Witch of the East. Now go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. But I didn't mean to hurt the first witch. That was an accident. I couldn't hurt anyone on purpose. Not even a Wicked Witch. Then I cannot help you. Next. Dorothy was devastated. She went out to the others and tried to hide her disappointment. That is so sad. How did it go? It was interesting. Good luck in there, Scarecrow. But the Scarecrow went in and came out just as disappointed as Dorothy. Then the Tin Man, then the Lion. Turns out they all got the same answer. Unless they defeated the Wicked Witch of the West, the wizard would not help them. I'll never get a brain. I'll never have a heart. I'll never get courage. And I'll never see Aunt Em or Uncle Henry or Kansas ever again. <laughs> What's wrong? The wizard told us he can't help us unless we go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> Oof, scary. Well, good luck. Well, we're not going to do it. Come on, guys. Let's go. Where to? I don't know. Maybe we can go look for the Good Witch of the North. Maybe she'll help us. But when Dorothy and her friends left the Emerald City, they were in for a surprise. <laughs> oh, Dorothy! The Wicked Witch of the West? Run! But the Wicked Witch was too fast for them. Her flying monkeys swooped in and snatched up the whole gang. Take that scarecrow and scatter his straw around till he's just a pile of clothes. And put that tin man in the recycling bin. Put the lion in a cage and sell him to the zoo. What about her? Take Dorothy to my castle. I'll take care of her. <laughs> now fly, monkeys, fly! Uh-oh, kids, this does not 
look good. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The Wicked Witch of the West had ordered the flying monkeys to carry Dorothy and her friends to different locations. The Tin Man was to be put in the recycling bin, the Scarecrow pulled into pieces, and the Lion locked away and sold to the zoo. Dorothy's fate was to be delivered to the witch's castle, a visit she was not looking forward to. Hey, guys, how about just dropping me off here? I'll, I'll run along and I'll never bother the Wicked Witch again. No way. Yeah, sorry, kid. You do not want to make the Wicked Witch angry. Yeah, I guess you're right. But the good news is, we won't hurt you. Okay, good to know. Thanks, but why? You wear the sapphire slippers. They're magic. Yeah, I heard that, but they haven't done anything magical so far. Well, you better watch out. The witch is definitely going to try to take those. The witch? Oh, no. The flying monkeys were right. The Wicked Witch of the West wanted nothing more than to get those sapphire slippers from Dorothy. When she arrived at the witch's castle, Dorothy was forced to do chores. And all the while, the witch watched, just waiting to take the shoes. Gotta get those shoes. Don't you want to change before you sweep up all that garbage? You'll get your shoes dirty. I'm okay, thanks. Oh, that floor is going to get slippery. Don't you think you should wear some less slippery shoes? Get it? Because they're slippers? But seriously, get me the shoes! I got it. Good one. But no, I'm okay in these shoes. Jeez, she really wants these shoes. And why is this castle so dirty? Ew. The witch waited and waited, but the only time Dorothy ever removed her slippers was when she took a bath. But the Wicked Witch was dreadfully afraid of water, so she never dare tried to steal them during bath time. I guess I'll just have to wait a little longer. Drat! Then one day, the witch's wait was finally over. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Dorothy was dusting a super high shelf when one of her slippers slipped right off. I got it! <laughs> it's mine! It's mine! Now give me the other one! Gimme! No! You gimme! You're powerless with only one shoe! So are you! Give it! No! Come on! Stop it! Ah! Now look what you've done! What's another mess? You make me clean all day anyway. Not that! I'm melting! Say what now? I'm melting! You melted me! You knew I couldn't touch water! I thought you were just afraid of it! Now you've destroyed me just like you destroyed my sister! You're a terrible girl! You're a bad, no good, stinking. Blah, 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 blah. But the witch melted before she could get out the last insult. Oh, I guess that's why she hated water. Who would have thunk it? Suddenly, Dorothy heard a familiar sound. It was a clanking of metal, a kind of swooshing sound, followed by a ferocious roar. Hey guys, how did you get here? I thought I'd never see you again. Wow, this is so fun. No time to explain now. We have to rescue you from the Wicked Witch. Come on. Thanks, but it's all good. She melted. <laughs> uh. oh? I'll explain later too. Let's go see the wizard. Oh yeah, now he'll grant our wishes. Hooray! The gang set out on their journey back to the Emerald City. The Scarecrow would get his brains, the Tin Man would get his heart, the Cowardly Lion would get his courage, and Dorothy and Toto would finally go back home to Kansas. And when they arrived, the wizard did not seem happy to see them. What are you doing here? I told you not to come back until you destroyed the Wicked Witch. And we have your greatness. This is not a joke. I know, she's gone. Dorothy melted her. Accidentally, but yeah. She's gone. <laughs> so we've come back so you can grant our wishes. Let's keep reading. Oh, I forgot to say please. Please, sir. <laughs> I cannot grant your wishes. Now go away. Wait, what? What do you mean you can't grant our wishes? So I can't go home to Kansas? <laughs> I won't get a brain. I won't get a heart. I won't get any courage. This is baloney. You're supposed to be some wise and wonderful wizard. You're a charlatan, a humbug. Where are you? If you won't give me courage, then at least get some for yourself and come out and face us.
Who are you? The wizard? What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So you're the mighty and wonderful Wizard of Oz? Well, I'm actually from Omaha, Nebraska. See, I landed here accidentally some years ago and I somehow convinced everyone that I was a wizard and well, here we are. So you're not a wizard. So you don't have any power. Um, no, not at all. Then we came all this way and did all of this for nothing? But you did destroy the Wicked Witch. That's a pretty big deal. How did you do it? Dorothy and the gang explained how it all went down. First, of course, they had been captured by the flying monkeys. The scarecrow had been pulled apart and scattered in a field. He lay in pieces when he suddenly had a bright idea. He knew that crows are pretty clever, so he called out and asked them to help put him back together, and they did. Once he was back to his old self, the scarecrow went to find the Tin Man. The Tin Man had been sold for scrap at a salvage yard and was feeling sadder than ever. But the scarecrow put him back together, polished him up, cause he had rusted quite a bit from crying. That is so sad. And they set off to find the lion. The lion had been locked up in a tiny cage and sold to the zoo. It was not a nice zoo at all. It was gloomy and full of terrible creatures like Kalinas. Remember those? Very scary. Not a good place for a lion with no courage. There, the scarecrow had another bright idea. He asked the Tin Man to use a bit of his metal to pick open the lock on the cage. And then, the lion was free. It was time to save Dorothy. But first, the Tin Man stopped to unlock each and every cage because it made him too sad to see any creature locked up, even Kalita's. The Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion headed toward the Wicked Witch's castle. They were all very scared, especially when the flying monkeys saw them and swooped in. But the Lion put on his brave face and roared, making all the monkeys fly away shrieking. He was ready to take on the Wicked Witch too, but when they got inside the castle, they found Dorothy had already melted her. And so, there you have it. That's how we defeated the Wicked Witch. Too bad it was all for nothing. That's not true. You've saved everyone in Oz from the Wicked Witch. You'll be celebrated here forever, Dorothy. You'll be a star. That is amazing. But I just want to go home. And I want a brain. I want my heart. And I want my courage. Scarecrow, you already have brains. How else could you have figured out how to put yourself and the Tin Man back together? It was your idea how to pick the lock on the cage, too. Hey, yeah. Well, I guess it was. See? You've had brains the whole time. And you, Tin Man, you've shown you have a heart. You freed all the animals in the zoo. Well, they looked unhappy. I wanted to help. That's heart. And Lion, you showed bravery when you stormed the witch's castle. And you certainly seemed brave a moment ago when you were roaring at me. Oh yeah, sorry about that. No worries. But don't you guys see? You've had what you were looking for the whole time. But what about Dorothy? Hmm, Dorothy. Let's see what we can do. Hey, what about the magic shoes? Dorothy, can you use them to get home? Magic shoes? You've got the sapphire slippers? That makes you the most powerful person in Oz. Do you know how to use them? Mm, nope, no idea. I'll bet the good witch knows. Scarecrow, you're really on a roll here with all the brain stuff. That's a great idea. So the wizard sent out a call to the good witch of the north. Yay, magic to the rescue. Dorothy, my dear, how are you? I'm so glad you made it to the Emerald City to see the great and powerful wizard. Yeah, about that. We'll chat later, but now we need to get this girl home to Kansas. And we were thinking... Well, I was thinking, I do that now. Yes, the Scarecrow was thinking you would know how to use the magic of the Sapphire Slippers to get home. So do you? Oh yes, it's quite simple. Take three steps in the sapphire shoes and say your wish. And then I'll be home. And then you'll be home. What? It's that easy? <laughs> Wait, you have to say goodbye first. Oh, right. I almost forgot that I would never see you again. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't, you'll rust. Tin Man, I'll never forget how kind you are. You have a wonderful heart. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy. <laughs> Someone better get his oil can. Lion, you're braver and fiercer than any Kalita in the whole land of Oz. 
Thank you for protecting us on our journey. Oh shucks, Dorothy. I'll miss ya. I'll even miss your terrifying dog, Toto. <laughs> Be nice, Toto. <laughs> Scarecrow, you've been with me the longest. I don't think we would have made it without your quick thinking. I think you're the real wizard here. Aw, oh, Dorothy, do you have to go? I do. I miss my family and my house and... Hey, wait a sec. My house is in Munchkinland. Huh, I wonder where Auntie M and Uncle Henry live now. Well, I better go. I love you guys and I'll miss you. Come on, Toto. We'll miss you. We love you. Bye, Dorothy. Dorothy took three steps and said, Take me home to Kansas. And in a flash, Dorothy and Toto were back in Kansas. It was more colorful than she had remembered, but maybe that's just because Dorothy was so happy to be home. Hi kids, Miss Booksy here with a Cool School exclusive. Today, I'm going to interview a real witch. <laughs> Super scary, huh? I mean, witches are always flying around on broomsticks and casting spells and being wicked, right? <laughs> well, we'll see. Help me welcome to the stage, the one, the only, oh, I don't know her real name, so come on out, witch! Hey, how are you? Happy to be here. Hi there. So what is your name? Alfred Boogers. Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> so tell me, how did you first become a witch? Were you born a witch? Did you go to a school for wizards and witchcraft? Ooh, do you play Quidditch? I was born into a family of witches. My mother was a witch, my mother's mother was a witch, and my mother's mother's mother was a witch. What about your mother's 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 mother? Was she a witch? No, she was an accountant. Oh, so what was your first spell? I turned the family cat into a chihuahua. What? I'm a dog person. Interesting. I always thought witches like cats. That's just a stereotype. Anyway, my spells got really good when I got my first bubbling cauldron. Ooh, tell me about that. What was the first thing you cooked up in your cauldron? First thing was chili. I make excellent chili, award-winning. Spicy but not too spicy, light on the beans. Oh, okay, but what kind of spells did you first cook up? Oh, right, let's see. Uh, one time I put in the hair of a yeti, the fingernail of a meerkat, one lizard's tongue, a dash of cinnamon, and the eye of a newt. And what did that do? made my entire kindergarten class levitate. You kids get back down here this minute or I'm calling the principal. That sounds fun. Want me to levitate you? Are you serious? Um, yes please. Do you have a bubbling cauldron? I have a crock pot. Eh, it's okay. I can just use my wand. Abracadabra. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> oh, hey, you have some schmutz on your hat. Oh, thanks. Hey. How do I get down? Hocus pocus. Ow! Whew. Sorry about that. The landing is the hottest part. <laughs> so, most people think of witches as wicked villains, but you actually weren't the bad guy in Snow White. Yeah, the evil queen was the villain there. I mean, her name is Evil Queen. What do you expect? Have you ever done anything truly wicked? Hmm. One time I cut the line at Disney World. For which ride? It was the line for the Bippity Boppity Boutique. Ooh, that is wicked. But I was such a cute princess. Fair enough, everyone deserves a princess moment. Exactly. Just one more question before you go. Is it annoying when people dress up as witches for Halloween? Not at all, I love it. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, you know. Plus, I blend right in and go trick or treating. Witches love candy, by the way. You can quote me on that. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time, bye. have you guys been there? Not long. You drool when you sleep. We're just so excited. We've never had a princess for a roommate, or any roommate at all, except for all of us, of course. And we used to have a dog. Does that count? I think so. Do you want breakfast? Snacky made pancakes. They're shaped like animals. They're the best. You're so perky for so early in the morning. <laughs> What's your name? Kitty. Cute. Hi there. It's time for story time at Cool School. I'm Miss Booksy. Today we're reading Snow White. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Well, that's my nickname. My real name is Margaret Katrine Simone Anna von Klesterstadenstank. 
Yeah, so most people just called her Snow White, and pretty much everyone agreed that Snow White was the coolest girl around. She was funny. And then I said, that's not a yo-yo, it's a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> she was smart. A-N-I-S-M. And that's how you spell anti-disestablishmentarianism. And best of all, she was kind to every creature on Earth. Oh, that is so nice. She was even kind to her stepmother, Katrine Francesca Karina Amelia Anastasia von Kleschberg-Dadenstonk but you can call her the Evil Queen for short. As you might guess, the Evil Queen was not nice at all. It's like she only cares about herself. Yes, that was the problem. The Queen did not care for anyone other than herself, and she cared for herself way too much. She even traveled all the way to Grim Forest, where the witches live, just to buy a magic mirror that would tell her how great she was. Oh, that's so not cool. This one is real nice. It'll tell you how wonderful you are. Error, error. Oh! Never mind, that one's no good. Okay, now this magic mirror is top of the line. You're gonna love it. Honestly, I'm getting some mean vibes from you. Ugh, next. Uh, okay, uh, this one. This is a great magic mirror. Go ahead, ask it. Excuse me, Mr. Mirror. No, 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 no. You gotta say, mirror, mirror on the wall. It likes that. All right, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You are my queen. You are the most amazing person of all. You're the best. Aha, I'll take it. Oh man, Snow White's stepmother loved that mirror. She would ask it like a dozen times a day if she was still the most amazing person in all the land. Will you pass the gravy, please? Hold on, hold on. Mirror, mirror, on the wall. It's your turn. Yes, yes, one moment. Mirror, mirror, on the wall. This again. Mirror, mirror, on the wall. Who I'm is trying the to sleep. Of all? So yeah, the mirror was pretty annoying. The queen loved giving Snow White chores, as evil queens tend to do. So one day she was cleaning the evil queen's bedroom. She was just about finished when she noticed some schmutz on the magic mirror. I'm definitely not allowed to touch the mirror, but she did say the room had better be spotless. I'd hate to make her mad. Snow White reached out to dust the mirror and... <gasps> it's you! What? You are the most amazing person in the land. Why, thank you, but don't say that. The queen will get, like, really mad. Ugh, she is so mean. But I can see that you have a good heart. <laughs> Are you actually just an x-ray machine? <laughs> no, I mean you have a good soul. Aw, that's so sweet. The queen has a rotten soul, by the way. Well, thanks for the compliment, but you really must keep telling her that she's the best. It's dangerous to make her mad. Promise? Okay. Long story short, the mirror did not keep his promise for long. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You, my lady, are an amazing person. Of all? Yeah, sure. Of all. Say it then. Say the whole thing. Uh, I meant to say that you, my queen, are the most amazing person of all? Good, just checking. Uh... What was that? Nothing, nothing, nothing. It sounded like something. It's just that Snow White may be more amazing. But the queen didn't scream or break things, and she didn't cry. She was just very quiet. That's not good, kids. When the evil queen gets quiet, it means she's really, 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 really mad. And like Snow White said, that can be very dangerous. This is kind of spooky. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Yep, she looks pretty mad. I will get rid of Snow White. That sounds bad. Poor Snow White, she didn't do anything. Yeah, I was just minding my own business. The evil queen tried all kinds of different ways to get rid of the princess. She locked me out. Oh, she tried to mail me to Alaska. She even tried to send me away in a hot air balloon. Wow, that is so mean. 
You might be wondering why my dad didn't step in and do anything. Well, he was away on King Business at the semi-annual Royal Symposium. That's where natural-born kings and queens go to learn royal stuff, like how to balance giant crowns on their heads and how to wave at a parade. So I was on my own. The queen was getting frustrated. She couldn't get rid of Snow White. She finally decided to go back to the witches of the Grim Forest. Surely they could get the job done. Oh, it's you again. Welcome back. I need a curse to get rid of a princess. Oh, goody. I just love those curses. What do you need? A hundred years sleep? Make her lose her singing voice? Ooh, maybe we turn her into a frog. I just want her to go away forever. Ooh, I see. A one-way ticket. Exactly. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. Well, my sister is a travel agent. We can send her to China. I was thinking something a little more permanent. Okay, okay. Well, how about a classic de-atomizer? What is that? I don't know, but it sounds cool, right? Can't you just do something, I don't know, witchy? Oh, sure. That's easy. Here's what you need. A bubbling cauldron, a rose, Ouch! watch out for the thorns, the tooth of a shark, eee! a rotten egg, Gross. a picture of Santa Claus, um, random, and a lock of Snow White's hair. And check. Mix it all together and say these words. Mecca like a ding dong, cherry chicken ping pong, Snow White, why don't you just disappear already? Mecca like a ding dong, cherry chicken ping pong, Snow White, why don't you just disappear already? And just like that, Snow White disappeared. Didn't think it would work, did you? Yeah, neither did I. Oh no, I hope she's okay. But here's the thing, boys and girls. People don't really disappear. They just appear somewhere else. And that's what happened to Snow White. She appeared in another fairy tale. Whoa, where am I? This isn't our kingdom. Hey, I think that's Cinderella. How'd I get into her storyline? Oh, maybe her fairy godmother can help me get home. Did somebody say fairy godmother? I did. Do you want to go to the ball too? I can let you go. But you can't win the heart of the prince. I already promised that to my goddaughter, Cinderella. That's okay, I don't need a prince. I just want to go home. Oh, gotcha. And with a wave of her wand, Cinderella's fairy godmother sent Snow White back home. Whoa. Yay, magic to the rescue. And at the very same moment, the evil queen was asking the magic mirror if she was the most amazing person in all the land. Uh, no, it's still Snow White. What? I got rid of her. It should be me. This is awkward. Oh, I'll get her. And this time, I'll make sure she never comes back. I've got a wicked good plan. <laughs> I think you have something in your teeth. Oh, be quiet. Uh-oh, she better watch out. Let's keep reading. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The evil queen had just discovered that Snow White was back and she was not happy. For revenge, she gave Snow White an endless list of chores to do. I had to clip her toenails. Ugh. I had to brush her cat's teeth. And as always, I had to clean her room, which she had left super messy on purpose. I mean, really, who leaves a half a meatloaf under the bed? Gross. Wow, that is so mean. Hey there, how's it going? Oh, <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> Sorry, I hope the queen's not being too mean. She's a real piece of work. Yeah, you think deep down maybe she's actually nice? Uh, I don't think so. She's pretty bad. I bet she was a really nice kid. And then something terrible happened, like a wizard cast a spell on her that made her bad. Not exactly. Or maybe she was attacked by a two-headed fire-breathing dragon, and she just hasn't been the same since. Or, or, or maybe she was tricked by a boy who said he was a charming prince, but then he turned out to be a scaly lizard. And ever since then, she's just too sad to be nice. Um, nope, I don't think so. Surely she hasn't always been evil. I'm an all-knowing mirror. Trust me, she's been bad since day one. That is so not cool. She drew angry frowny faces on all her sister's dolls. She cut her brother's hair, and not in a good way. She scribbled all over her family photos. She even put mustard in her mom's shampoo bottle. 
Yes, indeed. She is one bad apple. Well, if she's always been bad, then how come my dad wanted to marry her? She tricked him. Before your soon-to-be stepmother moved to town, she paid a little visit to the witches in the Grim Forest. Welcome to ye old witchcraft and novelty shop. What can I do for ya? I want to be queen. Hmm, I don't have any crowns, but I could sell you this t-shirt that says, I'm the queen, gotta love me. <gasps> That's it! I need to make the king fall in love with me. I need a potion, a love potion. Ooh, good idea. The witch sold her a magic love potion that would make a guy fall totally head over heels in love with her. Whoa, I'm totally head over heels in love with you. Will you marry me? Oh, now I get it. Unfortunately, that was my dad. And that's how she became the queen. And worst of all, my stepmother. Even back then, she didn't like me. Ugh. Seriously, who doesn't like babies? Hey, do you think the spell could be broken? That would take some very serious magic. Even the witches of the Grim Forest have trouble reversing spells. Wait, she's coming. How do you know? How many times do I have to tell you? I'm an all-knowing mirror. I know everything. Did I hear you talking to someone? Yeah, um, I, 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 I talk to myself when I'm cleaning. <laughs> really? What about? Well, I was just talking to myself about the weather. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful day, isn't it? Oh, I, I guess so. Now get back to work. Whew, that was a close one. That was close. Yeah, if she catches me talking to you, she'll lose it. <gasps> Uh-oh. What? Uh-oh is right, kids. The evil queen was listening at the door. Total fake out. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Tomorrow I'm sending you to the Grim Forest to return this defective mirror. I'm sure you'll both have a lovely time. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Wake up. What time is it? It's time to go to the Grim Forest. <laughs> he is the mirror. What happened to it? It's all smashed. See, I told you it was defective. See ya. She'll find her way into the forest, but she'll never find her way out. <laughs> what? No, that can't be. Okay, this is only extremely very scary. No big deal. <laughs> I wish the queen hadn't busted the mirror. He would be good company about now. Ugh, in these directions. Walk backwards down the dragon's path? Make a left at the gargoyles. A backwards left or a frontwards left? It's that way. Thanks. Then turn around three times at the troll's bridge. Hey there, my sweet. Ah, this is scary. I'm not your sweet, you troll. Sorry, I don't get out much. Then hop on one foot. Why? Hop on one foot past the Wicked War's warehouse. And so the wishes shop should be? You who right here. You looking for me? Yeah, how'd you know? Oh, just witches intuition. That means I'm a really good guesser. Come inside. So my stepmom wants to return this mirror. Oh, this mirror is very smart. Top of the line. Or at least it was. Yeah, I think the queen had a temper tantrum. <laughs> I remember her. Ugh, she's a doozy. Tell me about it. <laughs> this mirror was perfect for her. He knows when to tell a little white lie. Oh, like telling her she's the most amazing in the land? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a fib if I ever heard one. Hey, think we could just fix the mirror? I was starting to like him and I have a feeling I'm gonna need his all-knowing powers. <laughs> all-knowing is good. We'll just put a new face on him, new frame, and boom, looks brand new. <gasps> That's amazing. Awesome. Need anything else? Snake tooth, lucky pigtail, lotto tickets? Actually, 
Can you reverse a love spell? No way, I don't mess with love spells anymore. Legal reasons. Snow White said goodbye to the witch and began her journey out of the Grim Forest. Why, hello there. Hi. <laughs> Maybe the Grim Forest isn't so bad. Okay, so to get back, I just have to reverse the directions. Hey, where's the Wicked Wart's warehouse? Or the Troll Bridge? It's getting dark and I'm lost. Wait. I know, the mirror will know how to get out. Um, hello, Mr. Mirror? Where's the on switch? Snow White tried everything she could think of to get the mirror to work. She tried voice command. Mirror, activate. She tried shaking it. She tried smacking it. Finally, she tried yelling at no one in particular. Why? Um, excuse me, ma'am. Sorry, didn't mean to frighten you. Are you okay? I'm lost, and it's dark, and this mirror is supposed to know everything, and it won't turn on. And I'm hungry, and I'm scared, and... Who are you? I'm the professor. You must be smart. Do you know the way out of this forest? I need to get back to my kingdom. Yep, follow me. Okay. The professor led Snow White out of the Grim Forest, past the Wicked Ward's warehouse, the Troll Bridge, the Gargoyles, the Dragon's Path, all the way to where Snow White had began. Thank you so much, Professor. <laughs> You're welcome. I hope to see you again one day. Aw, that is so nice. I don't know if I'll be going back into the Grim Forest anytime soon, but <laughs> if I do, I'll look for ya. They said their goodbyes, and Snow White went inside the palace to give her stepmother the mirror. You're back? I mean, um, you're, you're back. How lovely. And I brought you a new mirror. <laughs> I don't know how to turn it on, though. It needs batteries. Duh. Oh. <laughs> well, good night. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You better say me. It's you, my queen. Hmm, you sound the same as my old mirror, the one I destroyed. All magic mirrors have this voice now. It's factory issue. Don't worry, my queen. That old mirror is history. Did you just wink? Uh, no, just something in my eye. Kids, what do you think is going to happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter 5, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The queen was not happy with Snow White's return. Hi, I'm Snow White, and I'm so cool. Blah, it's time to get rid of her once and for all. Uh-oh, she better watch out. Uh-oh. What did you say? I said uh-oh because, um, I haven't told you how awesome you look today, have I? Silly me, you look good, girlfriend. Oh, thank you. There you go, Mr. Squirrel. Keep the cast on for six weeks and don't get it wet. He's totally gonna get it wet. Hey there, Snow White. Let's pause for a second. That was Shep Huntsman. A lot of people just called him the Huntsman because he was actually the official hunter for the king. Okay, let's continue with the story. Hi, Shep. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> oh, you know, just hanging out. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, let's pause again. Snow White had a little bit of a crush on the Huntsman. Oh, so cute. What? He's really nice, and he taught me all kinds of wilderness survival skills. He taught me how to call a turkey. Hello, can I please speak to Mr. Turkey? No, like this. <laughs> and how to make s'mores. Are they done yet? Are they done yet? Are they done yet? He even taught me what to do if I encountered an angry fire-breathing dragon. <gasps> Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? It's you, it's you, oh. Anyway, what I mean is he's just cool, <laughs> whatever. So, how's it going? Oh, wait, I already asked you that, didn't I? Yoo-hoo, huntsman boy, I need to speak to you. Okay, your highness, be right there. No, now, I mean, please. <laughs> you better go, she's been super testy lately. Okay, see you later. See ya. <laughs> Huntsman boy, I need you to do a job for me. Sure, your highness. I need you to take Snow White out. On a date? A date? With her? Ugh, 
You have no taste. No, I need you to take Snow White deep into the forest and sell her to the wizard. I don't get it. There's nothing to get. You take her into the woods. You sell her to the weird wizard who will turn her into a frog or something. And then you bring me the money. Oh no. Why do you want the wizard to turn her into a frog? I don't care if it's a frog or a rock or a bobblehead toy. I just want her gone. I don't think I can do this. It's not nice. Ugh. If you don't do it, I will. And trust me, that's much worse for pretty little Snow White. Why? She's so sweet. That's exactly why. Now run along. You have work to do. This is bad. I mean, you look red. The huntsman was very upset. He went down to sit by the koi pond. That's where he liked to do his serious thinking. I really like Snow White. I couldn't do anything to hurt her. What am I supposed to do? What would you do if you were there? Meanwhile, Snow White went upstairs to do her chores and talked to her friend, the mirror. Hey, how are ya? The queen is making the huntsman take you out. On a date? No, out in the forest where he's gonna sell you to the wizard. The wizard? He turns people into frogs. Wait, Chef Huntsman would never do that to me. The queen said if he doesn't, she'll do worse. I think you should run away from the kingdom. This is my home. I'm the princess. It's not safe for you here. You'll find happiness in the forest. Trust me. Snow White knew the mirror wouldn't lie to her, so she went to her room to pack all her prized possessions. Why won't you fit? <sighs> You're probably better off here anyway, Teddy. I'll miss you. And I'll miss you too, Lamb. And I'll miss you, dollhouse with a real elevator and a tiny ice cream machine. And you, my beautiful dresses. I'm going to miss being a princess, but I will be brave. And I will go out into the forest and I will survive. One day, I will return. Not as a princess, but as a queen. Snap girl, that was fierce. And so Snow White set off to find the huntsmen and begin their journey. She was ready for her new adventure. Ooh, this is so exciting. Let's keep reading. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Snow White and the Huntsman set off for their journey into the Grim Forest. It was a little awkward for a few reasons. One, she totally knew he was supposed to sell her to the wizard. Two, he didn't know that she knew that he was supposed to sell her to the wizard. And he was nervous. And three, they were always a little awkward around each other anyway, because that's just how it is sometimes. When you kind of like somebody and you hope they like you back. So, uh, the sky is blue. Uh, uh I mean, a uh, nice day, right? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect day for a stroll. Yeah, just a nice stroll through a spooky forest. Well, that was weird. Look. I know the queen told you to get rid of me. You do? I won't sell you to the wizard, I promise. Psh, like I was gonna let you. What are we gonna do? I packed some basic survival items. Jerky, trail mix, water, jelly beans, first aid kit, oh, and I packed a teeny tiny teddy bear. <laughs> I couldn't get the big one to fit in my bag. I can't just leave you out here. I'll be okay. You taught me all kinds of survival skills. Why don't I stay here with you? Are you nuts? If you stay, then the queen will come looking for both of us. Yeah, that would be bad. I'll be all right. The queen's magic mirror told me so. Come visit me sometime? Of course. Here, take my camping toolkit. It's got all kinds of handy stuff, even fingernail clippers. Oh yeah, I guess there's no place for a mani-pedi out here. Whatever, <laughs> I'll be fine. I better go. Don't want to make the queen mad. See ya, Snow White. See ya, Shep Huntsman. And that's how Snow White began her first day as a non-princess, stranded in the woods with a small teddy bear and a pair of fingernail clippers. Well, I better start setting up camp. As Snow White began to work on her new dwelling, the Huntsman practiced his spiel for the queen. It had to be perfect. Why, yes, your highness. I definitely sold Snow White to the wizard. He said he'd turn her into a frog in no time. Yes, ma'am. I sold her for, oh no. If I sold the princess, then I should have money. I don't have any money. How are they ever gonna get out of this one?
The huntsman checked his pockets for loose change. Nope. He looked in his sock. Nada. He checked his fanny pack where he kept important things like his Phillips head screwdriver and chewing gum. Zip. Zilch. Zero. Wait, I know. To the koi pond. That's where I toss in my coins and make wishes. I wish I could get a puppy. I wish I could fly. I wish I could grow a mustache. I wish I had a hundred wishes. There must be like a million dollars in there by now. Hey, I never did get that puppy or that mustache. That's it, I'm taking my wishes back. Meanwhile, in Grim Forest, Snow White had just finished setting up her new, um, apartment? Perfect, it's shabby chic. <laughs> oh man. Okay, third time's a charm. Excuse me, Snow White? Professor, <laughs> boy am I glad to see you. What are you doing here? I live here now. <laughs> We're neighbors. Great, there goes the neighborhood. Who's your friend? That's Sassy McSassy Pants. That's your name? I love it. <laughs> OMG, I love it. My real name is Sasper. It's short for exasperation. No, it isn't. Snow White, you can't live out here like this. Oh, sure I can. I'm not a princess anymore. I'm just a regular girl. Regular girls don't live under a pile of sticks in Grim Forest. Come on, you're moving in with us. No. Hush, Sasper. Oh, I shouldn't intrude. No, she shouldn't. Nonsense. Let's go. Snow White grabbed her bag and followed the professor and Sasper to their little cottage in the woods. She was so excited. I've never had roommates before. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. Back at the kingdom, the huntsman had just gathered enough coins and was off to see the queen. Your majesty. Why are you all wet? Uh, it's raining. Uh, in the woods. It was raining in the woods. Anyway, here's your money. You sold Snow White to the wizard? Yup. He said he was definitely going to turn her into a frog. A frog? Are you sure? Yes, ma'am. You'll never see Snow White again. Well, you might see her as a frog, but it would be hard to tell it's her. Unless maybe she's wearing little yellow frog pants or something. How cute! Now please leave. Okay, your highness. See you later. Now, Muir, tell me, who is the most awesome and wonderful and dazzling person in all the land? Why, it's you, my queen. Obviously. Who else would it be? Snow White? Please, give me a break. As if. Psst. Okay, that's enough. Don't overdo it. <laughs> that was so funny. That night, everyone went to bed feeling pretty happy. The huntsman was glad he didn't have to sell Snow White to the bad wizard. The queen felt confident that she was the best thing since sliced bread. And Snow White was excited to start this new chapter in her life with her new cool roommates. I'm gonna need a bigger bed. Wow, that was so much fun. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Good morning. morning! How long have you guys been there? Not long! You drool when you sleep. We're just so excited. We've never had a princess for a roommate, or any roommate at all, except for all of us, of course. And we used to have a dog. Does that count? I think so. Do you want breakfast? Snacky made pancakes. They're shaped like animals. They're the best! You're so perky for so early in the morning. <laughs> What's your name? Kitty! Cute. You fell asleep as soon as you walked in the door yesterday. They didn't get a chance to introduce themselves. I was pooped. <laughs> Leaving your kingdom and roughing it in the woods is exhausting. <laughs> okay, let's do names. Of course I know you, Professor. <laughs> and now you know me and Sassy. I'm Snacky. He's the one who makes the pancakes. I'm the one who makes everything around here. Any favorite foods? Yes. I like corn on the cob, and white cheddar cheese puffs, and snow cones, and club sandwiches. Oh, hold the mayo, though. <laughs> Got it. I'm sloppy. I see. <laughs> I'm clumsy. That's just my nickname, though. I'm actually quite graceful. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> Those dwarves are so funny. Is that everyone? Don't forget me! Hi! <laughs> well, I'm pleased to meet all of you. So, what do you guys do for fun around here? We work. What? Work's no fun. Unless you get to work at an amusement park. <laughs> That's probably fun. We work in the mines! Oh, diamond mines? No, salt. Oh, and you have 
fun doing that? Sure, everything's fun when you're with your best pals. What do you do for fun? I dance and sing and go to parties and play with all my animal friends and read and get in snowball fights and fly kites and ride bikes and, well, yeah, just to name a few. <laughs> but I'll totally go to work in the mines with you guys. I'm no freeloader. You're much too big to go into the mines. Well, I'll work here then. <laughs> I can clean. I used to clean my stepmother's room all the time. We're not very messy. That's gotta hurt. Right. I'm also pretty good at sewing. <gasps> I can make you guys matching outfits. That no would be thanks. amazing. Well, then let me at least make some new curtains. There's a lot of bad feng shui around here. Finally, it was settled that Snow White would spruce up the cottage in exchange for free room and board. She did other little things too, like cut their hair and make a new chef's hat for Snacky. Oh, and she changed all the light bulbs, which was a huge help. Snow White kept so busy that she didn't even have time to miss home. Actually, speaking of home, the evil queen was having a ball without Snow White around. She brought the mirror with her everywhere and showed everyone how it would say that she was the most awesome person in all the land. Ask the mirror if you're the most awesome person. Okay, okay, I'll ask. Mirror, mirror, in my hand, who's the most awesome person in the land? Is it this guy? No. Is it her? Wow, that is so mean. It's you, queen. You are so awesome. Pretty rude, though, if you ask me. Hear that? I'm the most awesome person in the land. Three cheers for me. Oh, yay. Let's have a party in my honor, and I'll save my first dance for you, Mr. Huntsman. I, uh, actually can't. I'm busy. Busy? Too busy to attend a party of the Queen? What are you doing that's so important? I, uh, have to wash my hair. Yeah, that's it. Okay, bye. The queen knew he was telling her a lie, but she didn't know why. She watched the huntsman from her window as he walked out of the palace and straight toward... Grim Forest? Suspicious. I'll have to follow him and find out what he's up to. Uh-oh. He better watch out. Dun, dun, dun! What was that? Nothing. The queen followed the huntsman into the woods. Who's there? What was that? Is someone there? Finally, they stopped. Hey there. Snow White! Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter 8, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The queen watched as Snow White and the huntsman talked and laughed. That rotten huntsman was supposed to get rid of her! He was supposed to take her to the wicked wizard and have her turned into a frog! How hard is that? Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. Well, thanks for stopping by. Sure thing. Need anything special for next time? Yes, Snacky asked if you could bring him some marshmallows and graham crackers. We're gonna make s'mores. Awesome, we will do. Bye, Snow White. Bye, Chef! And please be careful. If the queen finds out, she'll be very angry and we're done for. Yes, that would be bad, wouldn't it, princess? The queen rushed over to the witch's shop and barged right in. Hey, ever hear a knocking? This is an emergency! I need something! Something evil. Yeah, all right. The next day, Snow White had just finished her chores when a little old woman popped out of nowhere and said, you, my lady, I'm but a poor peddler woman selling shoes door to door. Shoes? Oh, I don't have much money. They're on sale. They're so pretty and just your size. You deserve a treat. Well, I guess I could just take a look. Try them on. These are beautiful. I don't think I can afford them. No, they're free. <laughs> free? Why? Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Snow White started to go after the old woman to insist on paying her, only to realize I'm stuck. What? No, no, I'm turning to stone. Why? Help, help, help. Oh no, 
Snow White had become a statue from head to toe. She didn't even know what you and I know, that the old woman had really been the evil queen. Goodbye forever, Snow White. <laughs> what? No, that can't be. The queen went back to her kingdom, happy to be rid of Snow White. She marched straight towards the magic mirror. Question, why did you say I was the most awesome person in all the land when we both know you favor Snow White? But Snow White is gone, my queen. She is now. But since you're such a wise, all-knowing mirror, you must have known she's been in the grim forest all this time. Oh, see, when you said in all the land, I thought you meant around here, like in this kingdom. I didn't know you were counting grim forest. My bad. Well, it doesn't matter. She's gone forever this time, and you better watch your back. Ooh. The evil queen was also quite angry with the huntsman. She put him in jail and threw away the key. Wait, I didn't have dinner yet. Oh man. Meanwhile, back at Grim Forest, the dwarves were just coming back from work. What's that? Looks like a statue. It looks like Snow White. Cool, I want a statue that looks like me. Snow White, Snow White, come out here. There's a statue and it looks just like you. Wait, I think this is Snow White. It must be an evil curse from that evil queen. She's so evil. The dwarves were so upset, they didn't know how to reverse a curse, and they didn't know whether Snow White could think or feel in there, or if she truly was made of stone. What if she's scared? What if she gets cold? We have to move her inside. Those dwarves are so helpful. The dwarves tried with all their might, but they couldn't move Snow White. Professor, do you know any ways to reverse a spell? Well, let's see. Maybe she could kiss a frog. Here! <laughs> Why do you have a frog in your pocket? Why not? Okay, let's reverse this spell. Maybe say some magic words. Alakazam, abracadabra, Kalamazoo. What's you? It's no use, we don't know magic. We could go to a witch. But the witches live in the scary part of the forest. We'll just have to be brave. Yes, we have to save our friend. The professor and Giddy set off to find a witch to reverse the spell, while the rest of the gang stood watch to guard and protect Snow White. Ah! Shoo, go away. What if we can't reverse the spell and Snow White is a statue forever? Don't worry, Tiny, we'll have a happy ending. I just know it! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Professor and Giddy were on their way to find a way to save their friend Snow White, bravely trekking through the grim forest. Ah! 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 Okay, well, at least they were trying to be brave. But hey, at least they were willing to face their fears and help a friend, right? <laughs> that was hilarious. The two finally found what they were looking for. Ye old magic shop. Hello, hi, ding, 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 ding. Ah! I mean, hello, I'm Giddy. Good for you. And I'm the professor. We need to reverse an evil spell. What kind of spell? Our friend was turned to stone! That worked? Wow. Uh, alright, I mean, uh, let's see what I have in the antidote department. That means stuff that undoes bad stuff. But you're a professor, so you probably already knew that. Yes, I did! I didn't! I love learning new words! Ah, here we are. Now we just toss it in the cauldron... And... While Giddy, Professor, and the Witch mixed up the antidote, or stuff that undoes bad stuff, the evil queen was back at her castle, thinking, which is never a good thing. Snow White's turned to stone, but why don't I feel any better? I should be glowing, relaxed, happy. Mirror, do I look happy to you? Uh, you look, yeah. Look at that smile. No, this is no good. How do I know some dingbat isn't gonna stumble along and reverse the spell? I'm sure it's fine. Nope, I'm going back to take the statue. Oh no. The evil queen strikes again. Wake up guys, it's time to save Snow White. We have the antsy goat. That means stuff that undoes bad stuff. Right, Professor? Something like that, but yes. Guys, we can reverse the spell. Wait, where's Snow White? Snow White! Snow White, where are you? Guys, she's a statue. She can't answer you. Oh, right, statues can't talk. I got it. Snow White, blink twice if you can hear us. 
Gee, great plan. Well, if you had been guarding her, she wouldn't be lost. Me? I wasn't the only one. What about you? Oh, pretty please stop fighting. I don't like it. Giddy's right. We have to work together. It's no use. She's either been stolen. Statue net! Or maybe she came back to life and she left. No, she wouldn't just leave like that. I bet the evil queen took her. Of course. Well, we have to go find her. Blech. I'll consider that a yes. It was official. The seven cool dudes were on their way to save Snow White. Ooh, this is so exciting. Let's keep reading. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Well, there's the castle. Now what? We storm the gates and find Snow White. Wait, there's Snow White now. I have the witch's antidote. We'll just go up and turn her back to her old self. Hey, professor, over here. It's the Huntsman! Why are you in jail? The Queen locked me up for trying to help Snow White. I don't know what you're planning to do, but be careful. Uh-oh! We came to help Snow White! Huh? I thought Snow White was with you guys. She's here? Um... Oh, that's just a statue. The Queen put it there to torment me. Actually, we think that's the real Snow White. No! We're not sure, but we think so! But we have a potion from a witch that could change your back! Well, what are you standing here talking to me for? Go save Snow White! But the Huntsman said that just a wee bit too loudly, and yep, you guessed it. Suddenly, there was the evil queen standing right between the dwarves and Snow White. Uh-oh, they better watch out. Save Snow White? Never! We will save her! Aw, oh, you seem so upset. How sad would you be if I smashed that statue into a thousand pieces? No! no! Watch me! Okay, guys, it's time to fight back. But I'm a leopard, not a fighter. Today, we're all fighters. Now let's get that evil queen. The dwarves grabbed the queen's legs and stopped her in her tracks. Get off me! Get off! Not until Snow White lives and you're gone forever! The queen tried to move forward, but it was no use. But then she spotted the witch's spell-reversing potion in the professor's hand. Give me that! No way! Got it! <laughs> now get off me! Then the professor had an idea. You want us to let go of you? Yes! Let go! Okay! Let go, guys! But luck would have it that the evil queen dropped the antidote and it fell right smack dab on Snow White's head. Whew, that was a close one. It doesn't work! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> What's everybody crying about? And why are all these pigeons on me? Shoot, birds, shoot! Snow White, you're alive! Of course I'm alive, why wouldn't I be? But wait, why am I back at the castle? And Shep, why are you in jail? The evil queen put me here. No, where is she? Over there! Owie. I'm confused. It's a long story. I'll tell it, I love long stories. I'm all ears, but first we gotta do two things. Let's bust Shep out of jail and put that bad apple in his place. Yeah! No! Sorry, majority rules, evil queen drools. <laughs> Not wrong! Once the evil queen was locked away in jail, Shep, the dwarves, and Snow White all kicked back and relaxed, happy as could be. Wait, no, there was one thing missing. Snow White, my darling daughter. Dad, that's right. Remember back in chapter two when I told you that Snow White's dad was away at the semi-annual royal symposium? You know, the place where kings and queens go to learn royal stuff. Well, he was back. Yay, I'm so happy. Dad, I missed you. Where's the queen? Long story. Oh, yippee! Let me tell it. I love long stories. Now, how's that for a happy ending? <laughs> wow, that was so much fun. I just love happy endings. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. <laughs>